Suzuki took the honours in the women's competition and Wayne Warren became the oldest man to win it. Well, we have been made to wait, but over the course of the next nine days, we'll follow the journeys of all 72 players looking to walk away with that very title on this stage, which has been home to household names like Eric Bristow, Phil Taylor, Gina Gulliver and Martin Adams. And I'm delighted to be joined by two other household names as well. PDC major champion Paul the Asset Nicholson and a Lakeside legend Tony the Silverback O'Shea. It's great to see you both. We've got the, the Teletubbies in the house as well behind you. Just how excited are you, Paul, to have televised darts back at the Lakeside? Absolutely brilliant. Great work from the World Darts Federation to get this tournament on. Of course, it was scheduled for January, but of course, due to COVID-19, we've had to bring it through to April but it's a great time of year to play darts and walking through the doors this morning and coming onto this stage it just feels so right coming back to this venue at this point in time and I know Tony has uh, walked this stage many many times but even after a, just a two or three year period you still get those nerves it just feels right, doesn't it, Tony? As Paul said, you feel the history as you walk through the doors of this iconic venue. Just tell us a bit about what it's like playing here. Well, even after 20 years of playing here, just walking up outside this morning and, and seeing the front entrance, it just the goosebumps were there. And again, that five little minute walk up here along the uh, along the hockey there, it was uh, just brought back so many memories. It's, it's brilliant to be back here at the late time. So many great memories, I'm sure. Paul, what are you hoping for for the next nine days? In one word, stories. I think both draws for the men's and women's, it's very open. You look at the final for the girls' event and, of course, the boys' event, where there are going to be four taking part this week. You just get the feeling that stories are imminent. And I think with this open-style draw that we have with the men's and women's, I think we are going to get those stories, whatever they are. Do you think we could get some great stories this week, Tony? Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, that, that first game says everything. That could be a, a final in, in, in another year. But um, I think we've got the best of both here. We've got some of the best youngsters around, and I think we've got a lot of the best seniors around. So, as Paul said, there's stories to be written by both the young and the old this week. 48 men competing as well. We'll look at the women's draw a bit later on in more depth as well. But let's take a look at the round one men's draw. And, and that top half of the draw, it's a very different landscape, Tony, since the last time the championships were here. Who are you looking out for in that section? I mean, obviously, throughout the whole week, there's plenty of games to look forward to. But just, th just that first name there, John Scott, he he's travelled more than anyone to get the points to get here this year. I think he was the last one to qualify. So he's really put the work in. I, I hope he really enjoys. It. He's a great player as well. Uh, he's got every chance. Uh, again, uh, one of the senior players, Johnny Ains, he's done really well on the. He could be one of the dark horses I was mentioning about the senior players. And some, some standout games here too. I mean, obviously, further down the draw there, uh, Paul Hogan again. I'm going back to the seniors. Maybe that's because I'm a senior myself. I'm looking more at them. But but Hoagie has got the game to win here. He's never quite followed it through with that. And, uh, I'm expecting a big run from Ogie. His opponent, Justin, has been here four or five times. He's improved every single time. Um, again, that, to finish the, the evening off for the men, that could be a quality game of darts. So competitive, isn't it, Paul? So many players here will, will feel this is their moment. Yeah, I know Connor Scott quite well. He's from Surrey, so he's on home turf. He's not seeded, but he's highly fancied. And I think he could go very, very deep. But you look at some of the seeded players in this section, they're very much forgotten about when people are talking about this tournament. Leonard Gates coming from the United States has got so much experience, it could be his time. But do not forget about Andy Bartons of Belgium. He was heartbroken the last time he played on this stage when he lost in a deciding set. But you look a little bit further down the draw and I see that name, James Hurrell. I look at the way he's playing now, and if that's anything to go by, he could not only win this section, he could win the tournament, but he's going to have to go to a defending champion if that is the case. And of course, Wayne Warren, the defending champion, Tony, in that section of the draw. What, what do you think of his chances here? I mean, obviously, he's not really had a chance to enjoy being the champion due to lockdown. I'd love him to have a great run again. It'd be brilliant to see him win it again to make sure he does have that enjoyment. Um, it'll be tough for him because he's not had that much match practice and as, as Paul will tell you, you can't beat match practice. 
Definitely. We can't wait, can we, to get this first session underway. And we've got an absolute cracker to get things going here. Martin Wolfie Adams making his 27th World Championship appearances against young debutant Jared Cole. Paula Jacqueline and Wales' Rian O'Sullivan, who's very fancy, get the women's competition underway. And a bit later on, match five, it is Sweden against Romania. It's Dirty Harry taking on the teacher. That should be a great game between Andreas Harrison and Laszlo Kadar. But that first match, Paul, just leaps off the page. It, it couldn't get any better, could it, to get things rolling here? The perfect way to start this tournament is to have Martin Adams on this stage, regardless of whoever his opponent was going to be. But the fact that it's Jared Cole, one of the hottest properties in the young game throughout the world and has been for a period of years now, this is the right time for him to play Martin Adams on this stage. It's a barometer of where he stands. And there's no pressure on him. All the pressure is on the man who's been here more than 25, 26 times. Can Wolfie make it four titles? Yeah, of course he can. I mean, nine, nine darts are coming out of his ears just lately. Uh, his form's been phenomenal. He's had the off, odd off day, which we all have. But uh, again, it's um, yeah, he's got the game for it and he's been playing well this year already. Again, Jared's got nothing to lose. And he's going to go up there and really enjoy it. And I know he fancies it. I had a chat with him 20 minutes ago. He said, I feel brilliant. So for him to feel good, that, that could be quite dangerous for Martin, unfortunately. Mm, could be. It's all to play for here at the Lakeside. And as we've said, the man stepping up onto this hockey first up knows this place better than most. Hi, I'm Martin Adams, nicknamed Wolfie. Welcome to the Lakeside. Every player you say, I want to play at the Lakeside at least once in my lifetime. Yeah, it doesn't happen for every player, obviously, but I've been very fortunate. 94 was my first one, and I did 25 on the spin. And I'm pleased to say I won it three times, 2007, 10 and 11. I think the one highlight for me is always you know, winning your first World Championship against uh, Phil Nixon in 2007. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I was 6 0 up, and it went 6 all. Uh, the last set, I just thought to myself, well, just play that again that very first set because you played really well in that. So, and uh, you know, I won the last set 3 0. So, a little bit fortunate. You know, Phil could have had a couple of legs a lot in that last set, but you know, maybe a little bit of pressure got to Phil. Who knows? I don't know, but uh, I was pleased to take the win. Well, I first met Jared a few months ago now down in uh, when we were playing in the online live league. And um, uh, yeah, he's a very nice bloke. Very talented dark player, bit of a tough on Brighton to beat. I mean, here, the lakeside is going to be new for him, so uh, what he'll be thinking, I've got no idea. But all I, could, all I would say to him is make sure you go out and enjoy it. I mean, there's no good going to any tournament unless you've got a desire to win it. You, know, you don't just turn up just to play in it for the fun of it, you know, you, you come here to win. I think every player that's here will be in the same, same mindset. I'm here to win. Well, he's excited to be back in the building, back in his lair. Three-time world champion Martin Adams taking on Jared Cole in the opening match here. Don't go anywhere because the WDF World Championships get underway right after this break. Martin Adams back at the lakeside. It's been a while. How does it feel to be back here? Yeah, it's been a while, yeah. I mean, uh, what was it, three years ago, or four years ago, whatever it was, yeah. I lose count of the days these days, so that's the trouble. But, yeah, great to be back. Looking forward to it. And you've got some fantastic memories here, of course, winning the title three times. Just give us a little bit of insight into what your favourite moments are on this stage. Our favourite moments are always the ones you, where you're winning. You know, 2007 was fantastic, you know. Being 6-0 up. Phil draws it back to six all, and then you, you win the last set. I mean, that's you know, it's good stuff. You know, and the, the other two finals were absolutely fantastic as well. But every time you win here, it's always great because you get a great reaction from the crowd, and that's one of the things you can't buy. You can only experience it. There's a big difference in careers between you and the opponent you're playing in the first round today. Uh, you're a senior statesman, I'll put it that way, and Jared Cole, a young kid. What do you know about him? Oh, I've played against Jared in the uh, live league. Uh, he's a very good, good talent. Very young man compared to me, um, but we'll have a good game, you know. I mean, we get on well. He's a lovely man, and uh, yeah, I think he'll approach it in a good way, to be honest. 
you've seen it all here, you've done it all here. What are your ambitions for this tournament? Well, I don't come here to lose, let's just say that. Yeah, I mean, people have asked me this question loads and loads of times of what your ambitions for the tournament, but at the end of the day, I'll come here to win. Hopefully I will. If I don't, I don't. Well, good luck today, Martin. Look forward to you opening the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Jared Cole, uh, debut here at the Lakeside and playing Martin Adams in the very opening match of the tournament. How are you feeling about it all? Very excited. Um, can't wait to get started. Um, what have you done in preparation for this tournament? Well, I've been playing in Modus all the time, PDC darts and a couple of WDF events, obviously, to qualify for this. Um, yeah, a lot of darts, really, just preparation, practice. I feel really good. Obviously, you know a lot about Martin Adams as a man who's won this tournament three times. How do you feel about playing Martin and what are your memories of Martin watching him as a kid growing up? Well, it's, it's crazy. I mean, as I say, like, yeah, as a kid growing up, I used to watch him all the time. So it's a bit surreal playing him. And obviously I played him at Modus, but now playing him on his stage at Lakeside. It's a dream come true for me. Obviously, you've won a lot playing on the JDC Tour, various youth tours as well. Do you feel like this tournament for you could be kind of the journey from being the boy to being the man? Quite possibly. I mean, we'll see how it goes, but it's definitely going to put me in the right direction. It's the perfect experience for me, so, yeah, I can't wait to get started. And before the tournament starts, do you have any specific targets for the event? Obviously, you're all here to win, or will it just be a game at a time for you? Uh, for me, it's a game at a time. Obviously, you can't look any further than Martin Adams. I mean, when you get that for a first-round draw, it's like that becomes your final, and then from there on, every round is a final. So, we'll see what happens. Today. Well, good luck. We'll look forward to it. Thank you very much. Cheers. Welcome back to the iconic Lakeside Country Club. After a three month delay due to COVID, the wait is over and the WDF World Darts Championship is about to burst into life. The fans are looking forward to soaking up the unique atmosphere at this famous venue. So let's kick off nine days of darting drama with what feels like the perfect match to get things started. Three-time champion Martin Wolfie Adams against emerging star Jared Cole in a battle of the generations. I'll hand you over to our MC, the legend that is Richard Ashdown. Ladies and gentlemen, Brought to you for the very first time by the World Darts Federation, this is the 2022 Lakeside World Championships. It's our 35th year upon this famous stage, and we are back at the home of World Darts, the Lakeside! We now introduce a man making his lakeside debut. He's a former development tour winner and Finder Darts Masters youth champion, the king of the castle, Jared
to the stage a lakeside legend making his 27th World Championship appearance. Three times a Winmore World Masters Champion. Three times the Lakeside World Champion. It's Wolfie Martin Adams! Good afternoon, everybody. I'm alongside Tony O'Shea and watching what here looks like a real battle of the generations. Here's young Jared Cole, an exciting young talent from Hatfield in Hertfordshire. As you see, just 21 years old, but rapidly improving. Certainly a name for the future, and he says that in a way he's just delighted. It's a no lose situation because he's up against one of the legends here in this man, Martin Adams. Now 65 years old, three times the Lakeside champion. And I can tell you from chatting to him last night, he's just loving being back here, Tony. And he wants to come out here and play well, of course. As you know, John, it's his second home, is the Lakeside. Obviously, he loves being here. And he's proving once again that... that the age is just a number. He's still as good as he was ten years ago. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. His performance is at the online the best three sets. First show. set, first leg. It's Jared to throw first. Game on. So it's the best of five for each of the sets. The match is for the best of Eight three five. sets. That's the way it's working. And starting off then, 85 for Jared Cole. One hundred. Good start from Adams. Best of three sets. It's uh, if you play on a Tuesday night in your local league, that's a lot, of, a lot of legs. But for these guys, it's a, a fast match. One hundred and forty. Settling down right into it. Martin Adams, who says he's got a few fitness issues. 43. He was worried about it being a little bit chilly in here for a, a slightly niggly elbow that he has in his right arm. We all have 56. little problems as the years pass. Yeah, I was at the, the World Seniors a couple of months ago, and uh, that's literally what everyone was talking about. It wasn't about the weather or football, it, it was about which bit hurts most. <laughs> 100. It was quite funny at times, to be honest, though. Martin Adams, as I say, now 65 years old. He's just had a most fabulous career 100. within the BDO and within the WDF. And here looking to get off to a winning start in this opening, in this opening leg. Yeah, he knows this stage so 60. well. Obviously been Jared, 20, you require 25 120. Years That's some record. 120 required. He's looking for Shanghai. He can do it. He needs tops. Oh, 80. Just over pitched. I think he probably thought that was in. Yeah, he just had to alter his stance to touch them. Send out, blocked it a little. That double top moved to the left. Just give it a little bit too much. 
Good start from young Jared though. 43. Looking good for his first leg. Jared you require so 40. tops for 1-0. Double 10. Oh, double five. Game uh, and gets it down and the, the first leg. Dart. Jared That's the dart which will hurt Martin. Sees the first two. Second minutes. leg is Martin He'd to have been throw hoping first. that he was going to get Game the dart on. for it, but he's now a leg down. Yeah, we've said it a million times. That first leg, get it under your belt, is so important, and to do it in the very first leg of the match, great start for young Jared. Leads one nil. Sixty in this, in this sprint. <laughs> Only three sets. You get a good start. Ninety-six. Six legs off. The game's over. Yeah, you, you're vulnerable for upsets here. Although anybody who's seen Jared Cole playing in those online leagues knows just how good he is. On March the 18th, he topped Group 60. C of the online darts league with a series of terrific wins, including a 4-0 victory over a former champion here, Yella Klassen. One hundred and forty. Obviously, love being up on that stage. He's only 21, but he's had so many big games in his young life. He already looks like he was meant for these big stages. 140. Oh, his best performance was against Kevin Phillips, when it 4-3 with a 94 average in sealing a place here. And Wolfie under a little bit of pressure. 95. Just to try and get. His nose into this match. He needs to get a foot on the ladder. Yeah, sensible darts there from Jared. He knew 519s would leave him the big fish. He's put pressure on Martin. Needs the treble. And he can't find it, 60. so he's not on a finish. So Jared, you require Cole, Well, he can go for 170, but I think it's more likely just to set up. And here we go. Where's he going to leave it? Well, that's not what 58. he'd have required, or not what he'd have wished for. Yeah, it was all about that first dart. If that had been just on the top wire, I don't think he'd have gone for the bull anyway. He'd have laid it up. Right, not quite capitalising on that. 60. Yeah, he... Jared, you 112. 112. That's a single 92. He needs another treble 20 now. Yeah, it was a bit of a blocker again, wasn't it? Just under that. 60. Just under that Martin, wire. you require 121. 121. Treble 20, first port of call. Now treble 17. He's got it. Bullseye now. Oh, Game what a dart. shot! And the second the old leg. boy's still Martin got it. Adams. I mean, his scoring's been that good over the years. Third leg, it's Jarrett to throw I wish first. he could have a pound for every time on. he's killed 1-2-1 one, one at the end of a leg. It's just unbelievable the way he picked them off. So one much success hundred. over the years. Martin Adams, he was the England team captain from 1993 right the way through to 2013. He had a little break after 83. that. 83. He's back in the fold again now, he's back in the England squad. Well, he's proud of the fact and wears the badge on his uh, on his shirts of the prostate cancer 140. charity. 140. suffered from that, recovered. And here competing again and a proud supporter of that and rightly so. It's a great charity. Yeah, he puts a lot of time and effort into that charity. 43. Proud Englishman, like you said. Proud dart player. He gives it everything, no matter what the tournament. Yeah, still plays 60. for his county. Still plays for his local, the Bell down in Marsh, Deeping St. James. They'll be watching, I can guarantee that. There'll be a little roar in the uh, in the tap room there. Yeah, obviously the, 60. the elite players of the world probably don't turn out on a Tuesday like uh, like the old fellas do. It must be so good for his teammates seeing him play like this at, at 65 years of 59. age. 59. It's, it's ridiculous, really. But he's got a game on his hands and Cole with his nose ahead. Again, a little rueful shake of the head as that one floated away in the single one, but it's a good adjustment. 142 needed. Again, Jared's got a bit of time here. 102. Set it up lovely. Tops when he comes back. Ooh. 
100. Of trouble, but now tops to Jared, go two one ahead. 40. Thirty-two. Martin, you require one hundred and thirty-four. Well, Tom put a bit of pressure on uh, young Jared there. Needed that first start though. One fourteen left. It's a nice pick off, and probably at the fourteen to leave in the tops. Ninety-four. So pressure on this one now. Jared, young Jared, just eight. twenty-one years old. Learning all about a bit of pressure Game in front of the TV of the cameras game. and Jared doing Cole. it pretty well. Yeah, he's 2 1 up and he's Fourth not really Martin hit the heights yet. He's just, he's just warming Aim into on. the game. Martin might be uh, slightly worried, to be honest. He knows Jared can play so much better than this, as he can. Fabulous visit there just puts uh, more pressure on Martin. Nice cover shot. 96. To that third one there, to be honest. Cole had loads of successes at youth level and indeed on the PDC development tour where he's had a tournament win yet to get a one. PDC player's card. But I'm sure he'll be challenging for that one at some stage in the not too far distance. 58. Oh, such a good setup these days for these young dart players. Two or three cracks at the whip. You, like I say, you've got the, the youth, the JDC youth, the development tour, challenge tour. Real apprenticeship to 26. Players. Well, it's not just happening for Martin at the moment. One hundred and forty. Whereas Jared Cole is moving on nicely and looking well set here perhaps to take the opening set. Eighty one. Two oh seven, all about setting it up. It's one of the things we say he's got six darts minimum, but ninety nine. He's done the first bit, he just needs to bring it down to a nice three dart finish. Wolfie would give for a big hit here. That's a bit of a blocker coming downstairs. 58. And it's not happening Jared, at the moment. 108. Still got six darts from here. Sometimes it can be too many. But that was a great last 92. dart. 92. Lovely setup. Double eight when he returns. And Wolfie can do nothing about it apart from try and apply a bit of pressure and shaking his head a little One bit ruefully. He'd have hoped for more Jared, than that. So double 16. eight. Game and there it shot. is, and the that first is six. the opening Jared set, Cole. young Jared Cole takes it and leads to the first interval, he's one up and Wolfie's got it to do. Well, Jared Cole has taken the first set against the legend that is Martin Adams. Just how good did he look up there on his debut, Paul? First leg looked really comfortable. That was a good sign for Jared, but he could have been drawn into a bit of a battle in that first set had 
uh, you know, Martin not taking, uh, you know, his shot in the second leg. I think that one-to-one -one was very key for Martin to get the opportunity. But after that, it seemed like Martin was struggling with what is it, a slightly niggling knee injury. He was hobbling off the stage. But Jared, when he took the third leg, he just thought it's a matter of time before he takes the first set. I, I spoke to Wolfie this morning, actually, and he was saying he felt a bit like the walking wounded at the moment. Are, are you seeing that's having an impact? I'm sure it will. I mean, it, when you do have an injury in darts, it, it hampers your comfort zones. And this is a comfort zone for Martin, but unfortunately, when you get to 65 years of age, this is one of the sports where you can take it into pension age. But the fact of the matter is, if you are uncomfortable, it is going to play on your mind, especially when you're first game of the tournament. Jared Cole, when, when he walked on, he, he didn't look nervous at all, did he? He looked like he was just soaking up the atmosphere, really enjoying it. It really doesn't look like the nerves are getting to him at all. I think what you're seeing from young players these days is just a lot of you know, experience beyond their years. Jared has been around for a good five years playing top-level opponents. So to play Martin Adams on this stage, you've got to say it's just another day at the office for Jared Cole. He went up there with no expectation, but now being one set up. I think there may be a little bit more expectation than he thought at the start of the match. The I'll be interested to see where he goes from here. Do you think the fact it's best of three is going to really work in his favour? Because if it went on longer than that, you know, Wolfie's experience would, would really come into it. Absolutely a key point because Martin Adams has never played a World Championship match on this stage in this format. He's always played minimum best of five sets, and he has played the likes of Ryan Joyce and some other opponents in first round matches before where he's been up against the Kosh, but now he's got no choice but two sets from here, and that's a difficult ask considering what we saw in the first set. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, thanks for now. Let's see if Wolfie can find a way back and get back to the action. Welcome back to Lakeside, our first match of this year's Lakeside WDF World Championship and Martin Adams, one of the great names of darts here. You could almost describe him as the king of Lakeside. He's got it to do because Jared Cole is a set-up and it is the best of five to take a place in the next round where Anthony Allen would be awaiting but Martin Adams, best of three rather, to take a place in the next round, best of five for each of the legs, 6.11. And Cole can throw very much better than that, Adams we know can, he's got a best televised average set back in 2007 of 110.52, a way, way back. 177! Great start. Yeah, them two sort of covered the bed a bit, had to switch and did it perfectly. Quite a maximum, but just as good. He's got a little bit of a bounce in his Whoa. step now, as young Jared is fancying this. And that's a good adjustment. Crowd trying to rouse Wolfie. He needs to find some inspiration from somewhere and needs it quickly. After just six darts, Jared's got a chance of uh, setting up a break here, and he's back in there again. There's the first two. Well, he's set it up beautifully. What a beautiful leg of darts come back from the break at. Nine darts down to 48. This is more like it. Here we go. Cole, 48 for the opening leg. Beautifully done. That is a real quality leg. Well, to come back against the darts after that break and then go in 11 darts. Showing us everything he's got at the moment and he's back in again. 
There goes with his first maximum. That 177 as well, which sometimes I think should be described as a maximum, really, because it's as good as in scoring terms. Fabulous count, cover shots. You heard the shout from the crowd, fill it up, lad, and he has. Uh, when the going gets tough, people like Mr Adams, who's been there, done it all, got all the T-shirts. Putting things out of the fire there, still behind them. No trouble there. Now, that's a little bit of a glimmer of an opportunity for Wolfie, who has to jump all over this. And that's what it 180s gets you, puts pressure on the other player. Jared flying since the break, but that 180 seems to have checked him there. 167, it can be done, and he's got time. Adams not on a finish, so Cole would have had six darts from there, but he's, he's taken his eye off the ball a touch. Sometimes you get a false sense of security. I mean, that's probably too much of a lead at times. Nice. Exactly 180 to put the pressure on that 48. That's what he needed. Can he do this again? Can't finish it now. Losing 32. If he gets back at it though. Here goes the break opportunity. Great dart. Double nine. Double 16 for 2 0. No, no. Oh, a lot nearer. Double nine. Straight at it. And straight in. He's never down his skip. Probably thought he'd missed the chance there, missing that first double nine throw before. He didn't expect to get a chance again. When it came, he took it. The good old pro he is. I said to him uh, yesterday, when was the last time you played a, a three-set game on the lakeside stage? And he said it would have been with him, the World Masters. Short forward. Tremendous start again from Jared Cole. And the days Martin's on about, it was also three legs per set, not just the sets, it was three legs to a set, not five legs. They really were sprints. Yeah. Cole applying the pressure to the Adams throw even more. So many quality players who've One. never quite thrown like they can on this late side stage. It does funny things to people, but it's where he'd been here ten times before. Yeah, going back in time, we all know what a fabulous career Gary Anderson's had, but he never really did it here. Yeah, as I said, that stage it does funny things to certain players. Yeah. Maximum for Adams. He did that for double seven. So now Adams on 110. Ninety needed. Treble 18. Needed that for double 18. I'm surprised he switched there. That first start was so good on that top wire. He just got the natural throw. Then was to follow it. Treble 15. Topson for two one. Should be a decent. Mm. Surely now. Yes, in we go. 2-1. That's a great last dart. That the marker wasn't brilliant, but to be further away and then to come back and uh, probably an inch and a half, two Four inches to hit that double was a great dart. Game on. Jared Cole can sense victory here. 
Oh, oh, that's a lucky big deflection with the third dart. Yeah, his darts do go in at a slight angle and it does tend to, to lead that dart to the left. I think that was obvious with that double 16 a few minutes ago. As usual, Martin won't give up. One. And he's just got to fly from here, Adams. One more leg for Cole is all it needs. The best of the reset match. And he is producing big numbers when he wants them. Yeah, he's been brilliant in that treble 19. Scoring like that, it's always going to give you a chance to win any game. 232 plays 341, and so six darts minimum here for Cole. 65. Good thinking again, leaves himself on a checkout should it be needed with that 25. 36. Oh, but that's narrow again, he's got such a big lead. Previous meetings in online matches, Adams led by six to three. Looking as though that differential is going to be narrowed here this afternoon. Yeah, slight changing of the guard, I think. Looking good, Jarrell. 85 for the match. Oh, great dart. Tops. Double ten. And just steadies himself. I think you know he rushed that. Took the step back oh, and finished it like a champion. He showed real poise there, Tony. Yeah, definitely. That first dart, he rushed it. He knew he did. Little smile, stood back. And then popped that dart. Brilliant dart for young Jared. Martin Adams, ever the sportsman, applauding the youngster, 21-year-old Jared Cole from Hadfield, from Hadfield, who has emerged victorious here with a really good performance, putting the lakeside legend out of the competition. Jared Cole marches on to play Anthony Allen in the next round.
Welcome back to Lakeside. We've just had a brilliant opening game here. More on that in just a moment. But a quick reminder that cycling is coming up tomorrow on Eurosport with the Tour of Flanders live coverage of the men's and women's event. That's from 9.30. But here at the Lakeside, we've just seen debutant Jared Cole beat the Lakeside legend Martin Wolfie Adams here by two sets to nil. What a debut performance, Paul, from Jared Cole. It's very, very good for the rest of the debutants, isn't it? Because he's shown that it can be done and against a legend like Martin Adams. We say that the first set from Jared was very good. It was, it was very steady. He took his chances. But we talked in the break about what could possibly be more pressure on him going into set two. He improved, and that was the mark of that young 21-year-old kid. He's a great player. He's just disposed of Adams. Adams did look uncomfortable when he left the stage, mm -hmm. so maybe that knee issue is something that contributed to the game. But you have to give all the credit to the king of the castle. It could be his castle this week. Yeah, even when Wolfie started throwing the 180s, Jared Cole dealt with everything that he threw at him. Averages of 93 and in an impressive performance. And we can hear from the winner, Jared Cole, now with John Rawling. Jared, congratulations. It looked as though you enjoyed every moment of that. Yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, apart from my three darts of 32, I didn't put a foot wrong all, day, all game. I was over the moon. From the moment you walked on, you looked as though you absolutely reveled in this lakeside atmosphere. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, everyone, all my friends and family are here. Everyone I know, um, it's fantastic to be here. And wow, what a scalp. Yeah, you, you told me beforehand when we were chatting that win or lose, you know, this was a sort of a win-win situation for you, that the smile on your face and the, the glint in your eyes tells its own story. Of course, I mean, you don't beat Martin Adams on Lakeside so very often, like, let's be fair, I'm so happy with that, I'm very happy, I'm over the moon. And moving on, you know, I mean, what about that match first of all? You got some big scores absolutely when you needed them. You're peppering those trebles. Yeah, it came good when I needed it. I mean, it makes a change. <laughs> I mean, I was over the moon with how I played. Um, overall, really happy with my performance. And yeah, hopefully I bring that forward into the next couple of games. I was going to say, moving on, you must really be looking forward to the next one. Yeah, of course. I can't wait to get back up there now. <laughs> well done, well done. Thank enjoying you. the moment and keep playing well. Keep enjoying it. That's the big thing. I'll try my best. Thank you very much. So brilliant to see. Huge smiles from Jared Cole. As he said, it doesn't happen very often. You can beat Martin Adams at Lakeside. Paul, you can see what that meant to him. I've known Jared a few years. I met him when he was 16. He's always been a good talent. But the thing is, over the last few years, he's had his heart broken by this game. He's fallen in and out of love with it. And I think he needed this championship just to reignite his passion for the game. He's got the talent but the pandemic and missing out on PDC qualifying school by one match for his professional career. That really did take him uh, to a pretty dark place at some points. But this today, it's his shining moment. It could just be the start. And the confidence that he has. Anthony Allen next. You, you feel he could beat Allen? I, th I think he could. I think with uh, the exposure on the stage, going up against another debutant in Anthony Allen, I just get the feeling that he's now got the edge and Allen is up against it in a best of five set match in the second round. Well, our second game of the day then is an all English contest. And up next, it is Nasher. It's John Scott playing at the World Championships for the first time against the veteran, the punk, Johnny Haynes, who came through a qualifier to get to. So much to look forward to later on as well. Paula Jacqueline and Rihanna Sullivan get the women's competition under... WDF World Championships at the lakeside. The first man we introduced came through the WDF World Championship qualifiers. The punk, Johnny Haynes.
introduce a winner of three WDF World Ranking titles, Nasha John Scott! took down the old king of lakeside attention now turns to two players who've waited decades to live out their darting dream and play on this special stage as john scott nasher goes up against johnny haynes the punk the man who like the man alongside me tony o'shea has been applying his trade a little bit on the on the seniors tour but we've just seen a kid put in an excellent performance against wolfie martin Adams. before we get into this one tony just a quick word on that performance from jared cole and to be honest, before the game, like I say, I had a chat with him and he really, really was up for it and just played like he felt. Uh, a little tight early on, but as soon as he got into the, into the match, he, he was superb. He fancied it and, it and he actually did the job that he expected to do and that was uh, so impressive from the young man. Yeah, so from a young man to a couple of the older players, John Scott has been waiting the best part of a quarter of a century to get on this stage and as you said at the top of the show he's traveled around a lot to make sure he got here as well he, he was reserved when the final bdo event happened at the o2 and he was a reserve again for this tournament but he finally got the call to get in yeah and he, he was so chuffed with that i mean he, he put the hours in he traveled everywhere he went to some of the not so fashionable events in iceland and, 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 and so like i'm sure all these tourists born to these countries it's loving because uh, he always plasters it on uh, social media when he gets back well, I'm sure they invite him back every year now. Well, let's see if Nasher can get his teeth into this one from the start. Goes up against Swindon's Johnny Haynes, 57 years of age. He actually won through the, the qualifier in December <laughs> along with Jared Cole, which is a, a daunting day, isn't it? It's a real uh, test of character as well as skill. Like the long days. Like the a few of the, uh, the senior players got through, so... As I said, age is just a number. I know Johnny's a big punk fan there. He won't want to be Johnny Rotten today, will he? <laughs> he's actually going to a concert tonight, so he's not staying at the hotel. He's going back to Swindon area for a, a concert, a punk concert that he booked months and months ago before the dates had been changed. Well, let's see if he'll be uh, dancing at the concert tonight. Or he'll be kind of trying to cheer himself up. It's a difficult one to call, they've only met once before, that was when they actually both had a PDC tour card, they both came through the qualifying school at the same time back in 2012, Haynes won that one 6-4, and he does have a little bit of experience of playing on this stage, he played in the old John Smith tournament that they had here, got to the final in fact, and he's also played at the Alexandra Palace in the World Championship, so a little more experience. 140! Styles as well. He's got a real deliberate player. The best visit of the leg so far for John Scott gets him back into the leg, really. A leg in which he did throw first. Left him on a finish, 1 3 1. So he'll be hoping for a ton plus here. Put a bit of pressure on. Fraction to the left of the treble. He's 
95. Johnny, you require 131. Having a good old think about it. Treble 17 was the intended target. May have gone for two tops, but he hit it. 83. John, you require 117. Deceiving John when he's looking at the board. You, you can never tell which way he's going. And now he wants double tops for a 117 finish. 97. Johnny, you require. Choices for Haynes here. Ops for tops himself. And he finds it. Johnny Haynes breaks through in the first leg. That will be a settler. Nasha having missed the dart at the same target. And Haynes steps in and applies the paint. One hundred. That's what you need to do. You, you break a leg, you need to get straight into it. Is, is it a treble there, that first throw? Times he drifted into that five. I think it'd be an easy, easy fix that oh, one. Just no, move to the right no, and it never works. Well, you tell me, Tony, I'm sure you've tried to fix it many times. Yeah, for about 45 years and I still haven't got it right. <laughs> and most well, darts played you speak to say that the, the hardest doubles to hit are the first one and the last one in any match. So John Scott will be determined not to allow Haynes to breeze through this set, especially when it's on his darts. Well, with darts like that, he may not get a shot of double at all. Oh, oh, back in the red here. Yeah. Looking good. Sometimes players are put off playing a slow opponent, but not putting Johnny off. To one. Well, it doesn't have to go for it with Haynes. Go for the bull, that is. Yeah, that's why he's gone the 25 for double 18, and Haynes makes it look easy. We saw a, a one two one from Martin Adams in the first match. Johnny Haynes going a different way, taking out the combination, and he's looking very, very comfortable at the start of this tight. Yeah, he had plenty of options there. Just took his time, worked it out, and did exactly what he wanted. Looking very good, 2 0 up. 66. He's just not settled, John. And Nasha. Master Haynes back in it again, though. 100. But he's got decent memories here, Johnny Haynes. I mentioned that final that he reached at the, the John Smith tournament, which was a kind of more fun event around the World Championship. But then he came through that qualifier, which took place here. And he beat a much fancied player called Scott Walters in his decider in a match that he actually led 4-0 and then ended up 5-4 down before winning the game 6-5. So really went through it to get here. And he's got all the qualities then. He can lead and he can fight back. Through. He's pretty steady on that treble 20 as well. So pinch the darts off John here. He is 57 years of age, but he's playing for the last year or so with a new set of darts. Remarkably, Johnny Haynes playing with the exact same set of darts for the best part of four decades since he was a 17-year-old lad and picked the darts up. And he said that they actually started off as 21 grams and ended up as 12, 13 and 14. Well, just looking at the screen there, they look like the old copper tungstens, which did wear pretty quick, to be honest. And I'm amazed this one set lasted that long. Right. Leighton Reese used to play with him, the, the old copper tungsten. He's now settled on a set of 15 gram darts because he got used to throwing lighter darts because he'd been wearing the ones away. He's, still, he's wearing his opponent down in this match. Again, a good first start. And he's just not giving John Scott an opportunity to relax. 100. Stairs. 
seven of them 19s would have left him 32 but two more treble 19s here leaving the finish I think, th I think that one's in 133 Played, played and got Johnny you require 141 well, this would really hurt if Haynes can pull this off. He's not going to, so Scott is going to get three darts clear at double 16. 100. To stop this shaky start. John, you require 32. And in it goes, and John Scott is off the mark in this match. And we said one of the hardest double set is the first. Maybe, just maybe, that will settle him down a little bit. Oh, it's a fact, it does settle you down. 100. Just got to build on that now. I always find it hard to read slow players, to be honest, uh, when I was playing people. Fast throws are more, um, more excitable. If, if, if they hit a good score, you can see them, they bounce, but slow players, no matter what they seem to score, they just, they just plod on. So hard to read, young John. Yeah, we mentioned he's the man who's travelled to pick up ranking points to make sure that he, he gets here far and wide. His recent win was at the Reykjavik International Games. That was his third WDF ranking title. But previously to that, his two titles came in 2019 in Estonia. This is the Judith Charmers of the darts world. Yeah, well he's spent, as I said, 25 years wishing he was here, Tony. <laughs> and now he is. Big Arsenal fan as well, John Scott. Is he going to win? Oh, I'd forgotten it was Saturday for a minute then. <laughs> He also played in the qualifiers, as we were saying, he was reserved for the tournament. He lost in the last 32 to young Joe Davis, so I thought he wasn't in. And the last throw, John, at two treble uh, 19s. We need something similar here. Well, there's one. One more to leave the 170. 95. Johnny, you require 141. 61. 84. Went for out to ball to leave 36 again. He clicked it out last time. He's left a nice finish, which would give him the first set. Yes, yeah, Scott will be disappointed not to be in a position to do anything about it. But really, the damage was done when he missed that dart at tops in the first leg and then was broken when Haynes hit the same target. He's gone with throw since then. And Johnny Haynes now does have the opportunity to get the first set in his pocket. Johnny, you He's got plenty of time for this. 17. He already hit this. Off to looks it. First set. And a wonderful start from Johnny Haynes, breaking in leg one. And then holding firm and holding throw for the remainder of the set, which he takes 3-1 against Nasher John Scott. It's a 97 average after those first four legs in this match for Haynes. A fantastic start for the punk, who may well be singing and dancing when he goes to that concert this evening. At the break, it is John Scott nil, Johnny Haynes 1. More to come. Well, Johnny Haynes has taken the first set by three legs to one over John Scott. Paul, you are watching that closely. Just dissect that first set for us. 
really key first leg. Chris Murphy said it in commentary that if John Scott takes it, maybe it's a very different set. But the fact that Johnny took it on the target that John Scott had actually missed and then kicked on from there. Three legs in, he's averaging over 100. He's brought that down to really dangerous. It's all about what Johnny Haynes does now that will define him. He doesn't strike me as the kind of player who walks around with a great deal of confidence, but the fact of the matter is, when he walked on that stage with that music, I think he might have turned into a more confident Johnny Haynes than ever before. And John Scott came into the tournament late, didn't he, when the Russian players uh, were disqualified from the tournament. And, and he's put so much into getting here. Just tell us a bit about the, the background to, to what he has achieved to actually be standing on that lakeside stage. John Scott de deserves a lot of credit for actually just getting here. He's tried a few times and failed. He's been part of the backstage crew quite a few years. So he's watched on in anguish at other people trying to get his spot but the fact is I've known John for over 20 years and he's played at county level with Middlesex many times he's put in the work this performance today whatever happens he really does deserve his spot on this stage he's now got to find two straight sets against Johnny Haynes it's a really difficult task it's a tough task it is a real dream for him though what what can he do to find a way back he's got to believe in himself he's got to believe that he can find a level that he's never found before he has played some great players over the years. He's had some great performances. He's won some great tournaments, but it's about what he does now. Once again, I'm going to say that a lot this week, but John Scott is going to have to be composed. He's going to have to play his own game, and he's going to have to find those doubles, the opportunities, and if he gets them, he's got to take them. He can't give Johnny any more shots. Yeah, well, Johnny Haynes with the upper hand at the moment in this match. Let's get back to the action and see how it plays out. And the action continues here at the lakeside, the iconic stage, the home of World Darts, with Johnny Haynes having won the opening set with an average of 97. And John Scott did get a leg on the board, missed an opportunity in the first leg, and, and Paul Nicholson said it there as well, Tony, that that could actually prove to be the most pivotal leg of the match come the end of it. Yeah, obviously that first leg a bit tight, but Johnny's gone on from there and kicked on and he's improving as the match goes on. Obviously that first set, he didn't have to work that hard now, I'm pretty sure and Scotty Nasher went back in that room and, and sorted his head out. He'll be open to uh, change this game round. He's going to have to do it quickly, though. But just looking at that picture there, he just looks the more confident player. Yeah, more business-like, whereas perhaps John Scott is more trying to enjoy his day out. Something that is worth for a long time. It's a big experience for him. You know, my debut, a lot, of, a lot of the older players said, of course, you've got to enjoy it, but you've worked hard to get here. I probably had that in my head. I was going to enjoy it no matter what. I stayed the whole week, all 11 days, and I really did enjoy it. Well, to be fair to you, Tony, you did have to stay the whole week quite a lot of times when you came to the lakeside, didn't you? That was many years later, mate. <laughs> It's a question that I've always thought about because when commentators, pundits and things talk about players that have maybe not gone on to win the major tournaments but have appeared in many finals, it's a oh, hand fired in a maximum there. And he looks like he's enjoying it, as do they. But yeah, back to that. They talk about Michael Smith now, Dave Chisnell, players like Mervyn King, although he did win some when he played in the BDO. It's an achievement to get to the finals, isn't it? And that's what people forget. That, that was usually my answer. I mean, people have ended careers and not even got to a final. I'm, I'm here seven or eight, and 
going back there, Merv King beat me in two of my <laughs> losing finals. And two you're on about, he won, <laughs> he beat me in the finals. <laughs> 99. Do apologise. No, no, no. The no. Haynes has come out all guns blazing, determined not to rest on his laurels after that. Strong opening set, a 180 in this leg, down to a finish after nine darts. He's already improving that average. Does it improve it even more? Obviously can't finish now, but reload, reset. Just that bit ahead of John Scott in every leg, isn't he, in this match? It's like he's throwing first when he's not and throwing twice when he's throwing first. Yeah, he's stealing the darts, but he's been given a golden opportunity here as Nasher. Make the most of it though. Unfortunately, not at the moment. Six. Johnny, you the worst throw of the match for young Johnny in there and uh, wasn't jumped all over. He's making the most of this. Just tidying up now, treble 17. Six was the target. Just got a little bit scrappy since that maximum. Nasher again, not in a position to do anything about it. Yeah, that's been the big difference. Fourteen. You know John's a far better player than this. Johnny, you require eighteen. For treble twenty. And you know he likes this. Forty-one. Obviously not. John, you require one hundred and sixty. Swagger from Scott in the background there. He fancies this. But he's not going to take it out. Not a badly pitched dart, but just too low. Haynes are having thrown that Six. final dart in the one. He's only going to get two darts Johnny, double rather than three. 39. Double ten. Yeah, but he hits it. Master. And Haynes seems Johnny like he's hitting man. everything so far in this match. It's going to be a long Second way back John to for John Scott from here. And he's been given too much time to put these little misses to bed. It's not quite close enough. Like you say, he's one shot behind every leg. 41. That's not going to help. Perfect first start for Haynes, unable to follow it. Wasn't far away. 100. Bit of a spring in his step now. 57-year-old from Swindon. I'm just disappointed that we never got to witness a match between John Scott and Dennis Priestley because we would have had Dennis the Menace and Nasher on the stage. That would have filled an afternoon, wouldn't it? <laughs> 100! Yeah, he's on Dennis's shirt, he had Nasher on it as well, didn't he? Some great shirts about these days. Things like that on cardigans back in the 80s, didn't they? <laughs> you may be a, a bit of a pioneer, Tony, yourself, with your chest thumping character. Yeah, I'll start there with the indigestion, you know. <laughs> well, it's amazing what little things can, can get the crowd on your side as well, isn't it? And that's something that players that perhaps we'll see over the course of this tournament, like John Scott, who haven't played on the big stages before, might have to think about trying to do at times. I mean, they, they call them gimmicks, but it's all it's all fun. You go around to any open event, virtually every player's got his own shirt on with his own nickname, no, his own little not. caricature on it, and it makes the day. Well, Hearn's making his own day here, and he's in the treble 20 again, and again. Oh, and it's a second maximum. And he's going to celebrate it. He might well be celebrating a win in a couple of minutes' time. Yeah, it's looking that way, Chris. As you said, it's never over to that last double. You've got to keep fighting. 100. Johnny, you require 61. Every time he's needed 61, he's gone for the 25. Well, 18 is taken off. It's a 43 remaining. He does like double top. And on this occasion, well, Scott has left a finish, but it's a big one again. 
It's a big one again, and it's got to go. Just get the sense in his expression that he thinks that the, the race is run. The race has never really got going for John Scott. when he's needed to as Johnny and some scrappy darts here and there seen enough already today that he can go quite deep into this tournament well it's textbook set player darts isn't it as he looks to fill it up once again here because he's broken the throw at the first available opportunity in both sets and it's hard to come back from that which always puts your opponent under pressure and uh, you're always in charge If you are just joining us, we're reminded that Jared Cole defeated three-time world champion Martin Adams in the opening match of the 2022 edition of the Lakeside World Championship. And we will turn our attention to the women's tournament next with Paula Jackson looking for her first win at Lakeside, taking on the much-fancied Welsh woman Rhiann O'Sullivan. Twice a f Is it true that players start to throw better when they think they're out of the pressure comes back on them because it, you're in with it at some point Well, that could be... Uh, just, not, just not enough darts at doubles to give him that confidence. Johnny, you require eight. First dart was too far away. He'll know it, though. Game, shot. And Haynes hit. And the match. And that's the Johnny match Haynes. for Johnny Haynes on his debut at the Lakeside. Two players who've spent a lot of time together, have crossed swords in the PDC and now in the WDF. And on each occasion, Johnny Haynes gets the win. But what he has done here... He's laid down a little bit of a marker. A 90 average for Haynes in a straight sex win in which he had Snasher, who never really got his teeth into the match. And it's a punk who goes through. Welcome back to the Back with Chris Murphy. Well, he, he was very asked to wait months. He is a piece of players. 
have chosen to accept his invitation of this uh, Lakeside Championship. And I think he could come in here with a bit of a free hit as the number one seed. I think Johnny Haynes will have come in here with a bit of a free hit as the number one seed. I think Johnny Haynes will have to find three or four on his average to win against the Belgian. Could be a very good contest. Could stories in this draw. Could Tisa Hedman finally, Paul, win a world championship? Well, she's never going to get a head the last 30 years. We all want to see her win one of these, but this, this is what she has to do. There's a lot of people in her way. Rihanna Sullivan playing in our first women's game of the championship against Paula Jacklin. She's a huge favourite here, and she's very much fancied as a dark horse for the title. Definitely. 18-year-old Bo Greaves certainly one to watch as well. But the first women's game is about to get underway. Paula Jacklin against Rianne O'Sullivan. And I'll hand you back over to little Richard. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to commence with the women's competition. Here are the 2022 WDF World Championships, and we're here at the home of World Darts, the Lakeside! We now introduce a two-time Lakeside World Championship finalist, a WDF Europe Cup winner. She's the captain of Wales, Rianne O'Sullivan! Flickering shadows of love on her blind. She was my woman. As she received me, I watched it when I. for her sixth World Championship appearance. The reigning Malta Open champion, the Lincolnshire Ladies County Captain, Paula All the well-wishers queuing up to have a final word with Paula Jacklin, who embraces Rianne O'Sullivan. Still only 41 years old, Rianne. She's been around a long time, though. She was beaten twice in the women's final by Trina Gulliver in 2010 and 2011. And at her best, Tony, she's a, she's a good player. She could beat anybody back in the day. That's quite a long break, though. I'd say that was uh, Trina at her best in them days. She had to be to beat Rhiannon. Rhiannon, born in Swansea, now living in Llanathli. And she also has the record for the highest checkout, or did at the time in 2012, when she got a 155 checkout against Dieter Hedman in a match. A match which, incidentally, she went on to be beaten in. 
wonder if this might be Dieter's year. Well, they'll have other ideas, of course. And Paula here from Willingham by Stowe, up near Gainsborough, north of Lincoln. She's yet to win a game here at, Link at uh, Lakeside, and I'm sure she'd love to lay that one to rest. Yeah, she's won more than a share everywhere else. It's, uh, it's another one of them. It's this venue, I think. Well, it doesn't suit everybody, does it? And they seem to suit uh, our two winners so far this afternoon, particularly young Jared Cole. I mean, he was absolutely gleaming after beating Martin Adams, wasn't he? But Paula Jacklin. Well, she won Thank the Malta you, Open gentlemen. last first year and she won the Torremolinos Classic this year, but it's O'Sullivan with the darts to start. Good oh, start it is. Classic style. No messing about. Get that arm up, get that dart gone. Away from the darting world, Rianne works as a childcare nursery nurse. Came through the qualifiers to get here for this competition. 16. Winner of this one will face Corinne Hammond in the next round. So she'll be keeping a close watch on this somewhere if she's not here in the Lakeside Auditorium. She'll be back in the practice room, keeping a close eye, I'm sure. <laughs> Lovely steady start from Rihanna Sullivan. to a finish. Forty-one. <laughs> Jacqueline and her husband used to run a nightclub up in Gainsborough. Not sure whether they still do. <laughs> and Sullivan all the way down to 41 after 15 darts. He's back into it, Rian. She's not been away. Because we've not seen her on the tour anywhere, you, you don't 41. judge how good the farm is. Rian, you require 41. Well, is she going to go one tops? No, she goes double 16. 33. Jacqueline way, way back though, so Rian will return. Still early days, but I'm sort of an average in 82. It's not going to trouble her. Good with four for Rian. For the other throw. Let's keep some of the first she goes. Best of five, a reminder for the set. And then the match. Quick format, best of three. And so important that you get away to a good start. And Rihanna Sullivan has done precisely that, and she'd love to follow up that with a break. Yeah, really nice start to the match. I was not found the range as yet. Until I said that. Inevitable, Tony. It's called uh, it's called the old commentator's curse. <laughs> Another steady turn from Rian. So she got a classic action, straight up, straight down, no messing. Sixty-six. Well, best year ever, as I say. When we're playing, if somebody at sixty-six, <laughs> as a proud Englishman. Twenty-two. <laughs> I don't know, it might be coming in Qatar. An interesting draw. Oh, 
we don't start singing that coming home rubbish too early. <laughs> start singing that after the final. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon, sir. He's pleased with himself. A bit too much support from somebody on the crowd there. Yeah, I think that was uh, a bit of an old-fashioned stare. Leanne didn't like that very much. I'm glad it wasn't me on the end of that step. <laughs> 81. And Paul is giving himself every opportunity here. On throw, but this is a good response. First maximum of the match. Tiny disturbance in the crowd's fired her up there. And three dart finish. Now, uh, will Paula respond? What she would do with the trouble? 60. So 118 for a break of throw. Trouble 20 would have left double 19. 78. She's tied nice. it up nicely, though. Oh, great switch well, downstairs. Oh, this the little fish. 170 being the big fish. If she'd got that treble, she'd have needed the little bull. 44. So top turn for 2-0. And there it was gone. We got to require 40. Well, for the break and a 2-0 lead. Yeah, that's been so the There seven. it is. Three and a seven. Moving on nicely. And looking for a hold of throw now to be set ahead at the interval. Yeah, looking really comfortable, Rianne. 41. Well, Jacqueline winning the Toro Molinos Classic. She stages that event, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, I think she's one of the organisers. And uh, we should do two or three around uh, all the nice places. Topping up the town. Forty-one. Well, that's not the response she'd hoped for. That was a real opportunity to get a hold of this set. Sixty. Again, good grouping from Rian. Only a sixty, but. £25,000 prize for the winner of the women's competition this year, incidentally. Men's winner will pick up £50,000. And that treble keeps her nose ahead in this all important leg. Second maximum. It's a sign of quality that. Your opponent hits a 121 and a ton, puts you under a little bit of pressure. If you've got that in the lock, you've always got a good chance of winning this game. And Paula react. She needs another treble just to leave a finish. 60. Oh dear. So 120. Shanghai had polished it off. Treble single double. Here it is. Oh! Just low. Really fancied that. All in a line. Like she's, she's thrown that, that way the whole match, to be honest. Along that 20. Talked about all the players who are missing in this women's event. Is it going to be the year maybe for Dieter Hedman? Well, Rio yeah, Sullivan will be fancying that maybe she can spin back the years a little bit and get herself into contention. Double ten, though, still needed and can't find. Again, it was good grouping, just, just two inches to the right. There's a chance. 
Going to take a brilliant finish though. Can't be done now. And single 14 to set it up. Just checking where she's at. Single 14 to leave tops. 94. So double tap. 20. For the first set. Yeah, that's and that's the one she set. wanted. You can see the reaction. Paula Jacqueline. Oh, what's the exchange of words about? I think Rianne was maybe talking about what had upset her in the crowd. Whatever. We have an interval with Rianne O'Sullivan leading 1 0. You're watching day one at the Lakeside. The WDF World Championships back here and in match three, Rihanna O'Sullivan has taken the first set against Paula Jacqueline. Paul Nicholson watching with me. Paul, taken that first set very easily, would you say? Very comfortable for Rihanna. She looks really pumped up on that stage. She's got a lot of support as well, which is definitely egging her along. But you've got to think that maybe Paula just hasn't found her range and she's been punished for that because Rihanna O'Sullivan, who's got an incredible hit rate here at Lakeside, She's made the final twice. Uh, just get the feeling it may be a matter of time before Rianne just punches her ticket into the next round. She's looking to make a third final at the fourth attempt. What do you think of her chances of doing that when we look at the draw and the side of the draw that she's in? When you look at the bottom half of the draw, you think there is a possibility for someone to have their best run here. But of course, Rianne has made the final before. And her prospective opponent, if she beats Paula Jacqueline, has also done that in Corinne Hammond, who is the number two seed now. The top of the draw is stacked. So the bottom half, we are just looking at that with rubbed hands and a little bit of a question mark, thinking who's possibly going to get to that final? It could be Rianne. Oh, Sullivan against Hammond. What, what a match that would be. Oh, yeah, it would. Uh, Corinne's a good friend of mine. Uh, we've played for Australia together. We've, we've, we've done some good stuff together. We actually uh, did a little bit of uh, mind training on the way to her getting to the final here a few years ago. I know she fancies it. It's a good section for the draw for her. It obviously works. It she did. To the final. Yeah, she was talking about maybe thinking about being on a nice hot beach instead of, you know, a wintry lakeside place. And, uh, Is that what you're thinking about now? Uh, not really. <laughs> I, I like the misty weather next to the lake. That could be one of the matches of the second round. There's nowhere else she'd rather be. I'm sure. expect Paula to improve when she comes back out here. She has to. 65 average in the first. It's not going to get done. With Rihanna above 80, comfortably above it, I think she's going to have to find her best darts from here. Let's not forget she hasn't won on this stage before, so it would be unknown territory for her. It's a really hard ask. And when we looked at the women's draw earlier, uh, we pointed out 18-year-old Bo Greaves, who could potentially be the youngest ever women's winner here. Just how well is she playing at the moment? Unbelievably well. She's been playing at such a great level for quite a few years. She has suffered with a little bit of dartitis over the last couple of years, but she's come through that. And when you see someone that young and that the expectancy of Bo as well to get to this level and to be a world champion before the age of 21, I think there's a lot of pressure on her shoulders, but if she lifted the title next weekend, I would not be surprised. She's an incredible dart player. I can just see Rihanna O'Sullivan and Paula Jacqueline over your shoulder, heading back here out at Lakeside. So let's get back for the second set.
Welcome back with the match now one up for Rhian O'Sullivan of Clenethley in Wales against Lincolnshire's Paula Jacklin and the averages tell a bit of a story O'Sullivan leading that one with an average of 84 against Jacklin just 65 so Paula knowing that she's going to have to up her levels if she's going to fight her way back here Tony Second set, first line. yardstick there, Martin's first. average was 10 lower than uh, Rihanna's at the moment. That shows how well she's playing. And in turn, it means that Paul has got to find probably 30 points on her average. One hundred. Well, that's a decent start. Needs more of the same. Eighty-three. To throw a maximum, Paula Jacklin. Rian's got a couple to her name. And with the higher average. 41. Some Romania the support in the crowd. We've got uh, Andreas Harrison against Lazio Kedar coming up before too long. Kedar, who's Romanian, here at the lakeside for the first time in his life. One of them, 40. I don't know if the viewers saw all the Vikings in the crowd. Maybe thought it was a bit of a homage to, to the Viking, Mr Fordham, but we're here for uh, Mr Harrison. There's a few of Mr Fordham's uh, friends and family around today here. Andreas Harrison, who, as you'll see, has um, got a particularly magnificent beard this year. <laughs> he always had a bit of a beard, but it's uh, he's obviously dedicated himself significantly to beard growth over the last few months. 68. Paula not on a finish, of course. Sullivan will come back with 110 needed for a break. And she's got the treble, leaves a 50. She's missed the single 10 though. Hundred and ten she's looking at. 78. Paula Nicely set up. She's tied it up. At 32. So Paula's got to take this Shanghai out. Needs a treble 20. Not going to get it. 100. So for an early break. We are not sure if 32. 32. Here she comes then to go a leg ahead in what she hopes will be the final set yeah, of the match. That's good, so and the there's the break. Rihanna Sullivan. Looking good. Second leg is Rihanna to the first. The match average back Evil. up to 85. Yeah, people talk about other sports, about being right up the middle. Golf's one of them straight down the fairway, but that, that just reminds me of Rianne's throw there. Everything's in a line up that 20, not drifting either side. Really impressive. 81. Yeah, she's been very, very smooth tonight. Looks like she's never been away. 100. Quality ton. at the, uh, the list of ladies in the tournament I sort of narrowed it down to probably 81. four um, and that's probably to make me if she goes through hasn't she against Corinne Hammond she's uh, got the makings of a very good game you know, so the qualifiers get this, this prelim as such in, in early sometimes that's an advantage when you play the seed seed comes in cold yeah 
traditionally the higher the rankings or they've done better this season but qualifiers had already had a game and a good game and a good winning game it can give them so much more confidence she's actually playing like the seed picking up another ton and on to a finish Forty-five. Uh, resignation about Paula Paula Jacqueline up there. She's uh, not fancying it too much. I don't think she's trying to g herself up, 60. saying, "Come on, come on!" As she goes back to her place behind the hockey, but she needs some big scores quick. Eighty-three. For another break of for a hold of throw rather and to extend her lead. Yeah, uh, beautifully done. Quality 96, two darts required, and now and one more leg needed for the match. First. She's looked so solid in the second set. Lovely finishing, great scoring. As you said, I think that losing streak's gonna carry on now for, for Paula. Something really strange would have to happen now. 100. I'm sure she'd uh, say, I just need to throw like I do in practice. She struggles to get her darts out of the board. 22. A glimmer of an opportunity of a leg here. Badly, badly needed, and the apology for the little hold up. That little uh, box under the stage there where the, uh, the dart landed for her to retrieve it. There's a really, really hot light. Oh, I've heard my finger once, I did exactly the same thing. To, to provide up lighting on, yeah. on the actual hockey itself. 60. It's quite a big bulb. Experience clearly uh, staying with you over the years. It's a great last dart. We've still got a big lead. Though. Yep, it'll be the first of the match if she can just manage to convert this from here. Not the door to touch there, though. changed. Sullivan, he has no doubt about it, through very well, averaging at six to take the match and eliminate Paul Jackson in the central. Oh, Side, just give it a few thoughts heading into it. It's been back here. It's a bit down, but it's still World Championship. You still got to get up for it and be excited. But being back here, definitely excited about it. Uh, what are your thoughts on the 
with looking at the draw, there's no nobody really picking a player that stands out to go and win the title or dominate. The bookies are finding it hard to separate. So all of you must really fancy your chances to have a deep run here. Oh yeah, definitely. If you look at the draw, there's so many people making their debuts here. No one's ever played here apart from a couple. So yeah, it's an open field. Anyone can win it. So I put my hat in that, my name in that hat as well. So. Just a quick word on the lakeside being back. I know the, the BDO sadly demised that the, the WDF have picked things up. Just a word on what they've done to actually get us to this point, albeit three months later than it was originally planned. Oh, it's amazing what they've done to make it happen, especially obviously hacking uh, cancer because of COVID, can then get it going. It's, yeah, fair play to them. Hats off to them. And how has that affected your uh, practice for this preparation for the event, having been playing in April when you were expecting to play in January? Nothing, I just keep throwing, just wait. It's going to happen, it's just when and just keep going. Well, good luck, Ben, and we'll see you later on. Thank you. Thanks a lot, mate. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Thank you very much. Oh, a long way from home, all the way from New Zealand, ready for the lakeside. First impressions? Um, it's, it was good. Very cold. The weather, the weather hasn't been put on for us, but... Um, it's it's awesome to be here. It's an honour to be here, and um, I'm looking forward to my match. And how's your form of late? Uh, I, I, I travelled over here for Q School, and I played a bit of the Challenge Tour. I uh, managed to make one of the finals for the Challenge Tour, so playing reasonably good. Went back home uh, for my manners isolation, and just been practicing most days, um, feeling good, practicing good, and we'll see what happens. And what about your match this afternoon? Clearly, you must be fancying your chances. Uh, yeah, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't um, uh, confident. But um, I'm looking forward to it. Ben, Ben's a fantastic player, and I, I've um, I met him. I played him online, and uh, yeah, like I said, I was looking forward to it. Good luck. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Wales's Rianne O'Sullivan didn't drop a leg, winning her round one match, knocking out Paula Jacqueline to progress to the second round here at Lakeside. And we can hear from Rianne now. She's been speaking to John Rawling. Rianne, well done. Congratulations. And uh, you played a really good game of darts there. I'm just so happy just to get over that first hurdle, and I'm, I'm happy to do a good game. So. I'm happy. You certainly did that. Yeah. Two maximums, some quality checkouts. And I know that it's an emotional one, this, for you, because you've had to come through a lot to be here. Yeah, well, I've only just recently lost my mother and my stepfather within the last year. So it, it's really for them, really. And it's, it's hard, but I'm, I'm happy that I'm here. And I know they would want me here, so... Well, I'm sure they'd have been immensely proud of you and uh, and also the way you played, it sort of really projects women's darts because, as I said, those two maximums and those two beautiful checkouts to tie up the match must have been delighted with that. Well, this is what us girls can do. So I, I'm, I'm just delighted that we've got the opportunity that more of us are here and more of us can show what we can do. So it's I'm happy that I've turned up. You've got, you've got the first nervous one out of the way anyway, so now it's moving on and Corin Hammond awaiting you. Yeah, I've played it once before. I came second, but it's a different game up there, so it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And what will be, will be. You know, I've got no pressure on me, so it's see what happens. A, de a decade ago, twice you went so close more than a decade ago wasn't it yeah. 2010 and 2011 yeah. going there against Trina Gulliver do you do you in your heart think that maybe you could still do it why not but I know that the standard for everybody has improved and there's more of us ladies here which is great um I'd love it 
I love it, and so would everybody else this year. So it's it's all up for to win and, and, and to do. So it's I'm looking forward to it. Rianne, well played, really well played, and I know it meant a lot to you, so yeah. well done. Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you for all the support as well, brilliant. Well, we loved watching her. She more than turned up, checking out brilliantly, Paul. 86 average there. She said she played a good game. That was more than that. Better than good. I think that's one of the best performances she's had in front of any camera. And when you think about the, the one dart breakdown, that's just under 29 every visit. It's a really good performance for Rianne. I think what she needs to do is take stock of that and realize just how well she's playing right now. That's why we're fancying her for her chances in this draw. She's got a really tough game next. And that's why we think that next game could be brilliant because if Hammond turns up, and Rianne shows up as well. It could be a stonker. It's set up brilliantly, isn't it? But if she's started like that, Rianne O'Sullivan, just how far could she go? Could she reach another final? She can win it. A lot of these ladies can win it. That's the beautiful thing about this draw. We look at Bo Greaves, we look at Dita Hedman, we look at Mikuru Suzuki, we look at the people in the bottom half of the draw as well. And you just think that someone who gets that early marker, which has been laid down now with an 86 average, people are going to have to stay with that. And if Rianne stays at that and potentially improves a little bit, she can win this. Flying the flag for Wales and for women's darts here, definitely. She's through to the second round. Earlier, we also saw Jared Cole head through to round two as well, knocking out legend Martin Adams. And Johnny Haynes is through as well. But up next, Paul, it's Ben Hazel, who's had an impressive year on the WDF Tour against Hawpai Pua, New Zealand ace, who has as well experience on the Briggs stage. This looks set up to be really competitive on paper. What are you expecting? I'm expecting a very deliberate match here. We're not going to look at two rapid-firing players. But the fact of the matter is, Hawpai Pua has got a lot of experience playing in different arenas throughout the world in the last few years. He's exposed himself to uncomfortable situations, and Ben Hazel has as well. I think for the first time today, we'll see a match go 2-1. Yeah, well, hope I'm flying halfway round the world to be here at the lakeside up against Ben Hazel in our next match. So let's hand you back to your MC, Richard Ashdown. It's back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we return to the men's competition here at the 2022 WDF World Championships at the home of World Darts, the lakeside. And it's time for a lakeside debut for Hopes. The reigning New Zealand Open champion, Hopai Puha! It's a second World Championship appearance for Mr. Ben. A ranking title winner in Lithuania, England's Ben Hazel! Well, the darty party is in full swing here at the lakeside, and we've got a, a really good golfer on the stage in the form of Hopai Puha of New Zealand. And ben Hazel, the Londoner, Mr. Ben, his, uh, his nickname. 
ready to take on a man who, yeah, twice won the New Zealand Maori Championship playing golf. Well, he swapped the golf clubs for the arrows and he's played some decent stuff in the world of darts as well. He's played in the PDC World Cup of darts before and the World Championship. And it's our first bit of international flavour in hopes going up against the 31 year old Ben Hazel. And Chris Murphy rejoining the commentary box. Tony O'Shea still alongside me. So far, Tony, we've seen three pretty one sided matches. Yeah, but as, uh, as was said by Paul there, I think he's right. This is going to be a tight game. I just hope they both play like they can. It's a long way to come from Christchurch. Maybe a bit more pressure. If they play like they can, we're going to get a cracker here. They've just given me some perspective there, Tony, because I was moaning about the drive down from Yorkshire last night. A bit more goes into it for the likes of Hopi. 37 years of age. And he lost 3-0 when he played at the Thank Alexandra you, Palace. First set, first leg, Ben to Rufus. And that was against Mickey Mansell, a very experienced player, but he's going up against a man who's on the lakeside stage for the first time as well, although Ben did play at the 0-2. He lost out to Chris Landman, the Dutchman. Yeah, the good run Chris Landman's that year. Great Dutch player. It's like starting again for Big Ben here. It is his second 57. World Championships, but first at the traditional home of darts. Yeah, and he actually said that when he qualified for the 0-2, there was part of him that wished he was playing at the lakeside. It's still something that players aspire to isn't it yeah no, nobody thinks about the prize money or anything else it's, it's the prestige of, of playing here just just playing here is just amazing i think too many i mean i was guilty of it in my first time i just wanted in case it was the one and only time i came here i stayed all 10 11 days and, and really enjoyed every minute of it once that was out of the way then i could start <laughs> sort of concentrating a bit i think a lot of players do exactly that you just think about the occasion and, and actually getting here after after all them years of, of hoping. Yeah, but at heart, those of us, whether we're sat in the commentary box or stood playing darts on the stage or, or refereeing, like Anthony Dundas says for this match, we're all darts fans at heart, aren't we? So it's difficult to move, it must be difficult to move into that professional mindset. I'm here to do a job. I mean, I, personally, I came into the game very late. I, was, I think I was 40 when I first appeared here, which obviously uh, was nearly old enough for the seniors on my first time here. So. I was about to say, Tony, I didn't know it was only five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, it's going to take uh, time to adjust. Which way coming across the, the planet's easiest, you know, for the, uh, to get used to the time zones. I went to uh, Australia in 2005, and uh, it was perfect when I got there. I really enjoyed it. Coming home it was awful. I just couldn't get my bearings for for a week nearly. Yeah, was so that listening to an interview with a Canadian player? I think it was Rory Hampton who's in the tournament 45. tonight. He said that he's actually missed matches due to being asleep because he's been unable to adjust to the time zone flying over. But both players seemingly asleep, Tony, at the start of this one. Well, again, it's adjusting. It's so important, the first leg. We've, we've said it before, if, if you can nick it. And, uh, that really tickled me about Johnny Haynes there saying it, if he'd have won the bully, he'd give it away. I mean, that was an old mind trick from Phil Taylor back in the day. Ben I've heard stories of other players going for double tops when they're going for the ball just to just to try and get in his head for a change. <laughs> I don't think it worked back in the day though, did it? Yeah, I've heard rumours of Taylor. Both players have hit 25 five times, he then hits the ball and then gives it him anyway. Mind games, he was the king, wasn't he? And he learnt off the, the king before him, the deposed king. That's the Bristol. You know, all great sort of grace this great stage now ben hazel looking to win his first leg on it double 12 the target double six 
double three. He finds it. Not the best leg in the world, but it only counts for one on the scoring machine. That's all that matters. Was only a hold, though. Other than that trip to the O2, no real televised darts experience for Ben Hayes and has appeared at the World Masters a couple of times, but you don't always end up on the TV at the World Masters. Well, obviously, uh, he's had this ambition forever. All his darting career is at the late side. More players make <laughs> well, Puha has managed to has managed to make his way down to a finish, as has his opponent, but a much bigger one. So a chance for the New Zealander to level up and give his fans something to shout about. Taking a big, deep breath before taking aim at that double. They're rendering off a really nice leg there warming into the game. Just a bit too high. Oh, oh, the pressure there. He won't be rushed. He didn't like that. Pulled that a little, stopped and refocused. Game shot the second leg. Got in the end though, that's all that matters. And I was just about to ask the question whether the delay on the doubles was actually hindering Hopi rather than helping, but that's an irrelevant question now because it hits the double and levels the match. Yeah, he stopped and refocused, but then missed by probably more than the first time. He got there in the end, that's all that matters. We spoke about the lack of experience for Hazel on the big stage, but as I mentioned at the top of this match, Hope I've played at the PDC World Cup, actually a quarter-finalist for New Zealand with Cody Harris back in 2019. And they'd beaten Lithuanian and South African teams, which featured the likes of Darius Labanauskas and Devon Peterson en route. Yeah, look how their careers have uh, sparkled since them days. Sure as you get in it. In at the ground level and, and, and persevere and practice. And Devon now one of the top players in the world. Absolutely. And on the World Series tour as well, he ran into some of the top players on the world. He didn't win a game. On those events down under, but lost to world champions Rob Cross, Gary Anderson, and a lakeside leg legend in Raymond Van Barneveld, who's won the most men's titles here. Pair hitting each other with ton fort is just starting to sparkle this one. And maybe this is what they needed to bounce off each other. 139. See it so often in every single tournament, wherever it suddenly starts off not too clever. They seem to get lulled into it. And as soon as somebody hits it, then they both hit it. And obviously. 139. What's happening here? It was almost a, an exact copy, but he opted for the 17 segment. A couple of two treble turns for both players. It's two singles to a double, but he's missed the big number. 22. And that could come back to bite Ben Hazel. Sacrilege missing a big number. Especially after scoring as he has. What a great leg up to now. For the break. 20 or 12, leaves him 32. And he's got the break. Classy leg there. Effectively taking control with that break of throw. Hopai Puha. Glorious haircut, isn't it? Yes. He's starting to look a lot more comfortable on the hockey now, Hopai. Yeah, Hazel will feel like he's really missed a trick there because he himself was throwing his best leg of darts and then cost himself a dart at double. Yeah, one clumsy dart. It's 
140. And the scoring has certainly sharpened up from the pair of them after a forgivably nervy start to this match. 100. And we've seen other games where one of the players has just not managed to settle at all. I don't think that's the case here already. Well, that's literally every match we've seen today. 140. Well, certainly Paula Jacqueline wasn't allowed to by the brilliance of Rihanna Sullivan in the previous match. And a, a similar story for John Scott, who lost in straight sets to Johnny Haynes, who's on his way to his punk concert now. 100. And it started well for Martin Adams with that 1-2-1 one, one checkout, but not much else went Wolfie's way. Uh, he's irresistible at times, young Joe Cole. 41. Joe Cole. <laughs> well, he was, but <laughs> quite a few years ago. Jared Cole. I saw him play once in a, a charity darts event as well, Joe. Any good? I think most footballers have got a dartboard in the uh, changing rooms these days. And other cricketers do. I think it's uh, Leicester's James Madison who is pretty handy with the arrows. He sometimes celebrates by throwing a dart as well. I've seen him do it in the, in the pitch. It's a global game now, his darts. 100. Yeah, you mentioned the online tournaments, it's one of the sports that really managed to survive and in some ways thrive through the, the lockdowns, something that people were able to do at home to keep themselves occupied and maybe we've got a few budding darts in the future that were born out of a horrible situation. Just in this first set, you would think, I need another one of them. Dropped a bit low there, could have busted it, still wants tops though. 40. Well, this would hurt. Looking at treble 19 to get two at double 16. And this start at double from Hazel. Can Puha punish? 20. Or the treble. It is the treble for double five. He'll take his time again. Full focus. 84. But he's given a chance back to Hazel. Maybe require 40. I couldn't really call that a marker. Oh, that one. 20. Just didn't look set for any of them darts then. Who oh, you require 5. The hardest bit of this is this single one. But he's managed to find it. And now he wants a double one. A knowing nod from Hazel, Ooh. he thought he was going in. Just seemed kind of G himself up there. I mean, shaking Thank your head before you throw the dart. Not a usual tactic. Can't go inside. Has gone inside. Puha will return. To finish off this opening set. Oh, a spell of high scoring. Some great darts, now it's gone a bit scrappy again. Again, it's this single one. Done the hard bit. Three. Oh, my Chris. Maybe it requires 20. Looks a little bit calmer approaching the hockey this time. And that's the way, Ben. Keep calm and carry on. And we will carry on because it's 2 2. And you called it at the start of the match. This would be the tightest of the lot. And the first set is the tightest set we've seen so far today. 16. It was a brave last doubt there. I thought he'd switch downstairs. Not the start he would have wanted, though. We were due a tight game though. 57. Yeah, and again, as we have some Mr. Ben fans in. They do seem to have done what you suggested they might and have gone with each other. One struggles on the doubles, whoever does the same in the same leg. One starts scoring well, the other responds in kind. And it's coming in waves, isn't it, the form? 
Be the first one to break the mould though. We kick on. Well, Hazel has the darts in the decider, having broken back, and Puha must be feeling hurt having not cleaned up the set in the previous leg, having had ample opportunity to do so. Yeah, that can affect your confidence, and uh, it's a great last dart from Ben there. That was almost giving the darts back. It might sound like a strange thing to say, but hitting the treble 20 could have actually contributed to his downfall in the previous leg because he hit it to leave double five and then it all went wrong from there, didn't it? Yeah, before before he let that dart go, he's probably thinking big 20 and I shot the ball. Slight little thing can throw you though. 45. They're going to get frustrated here. It's, you can see it in both of the faces. A lonely place upon that hockey when things aren't going. Just looking like a little bit of a slog now. 42. For Puha, who's not managed to find a treble in a dozen darts in this leg. 54. In a five-set match, you can just write off losing the first set. If you haven't played well, your opponent's not played well, but you nick it or you, whichever, you can get off. You've still got four sets to put it right. You make a mess of his first set. It's so tight then after that. 137. Well, even he's saying, where did that come from? Finishes, two points in it, but Puha with the first stab. Yeah, ben lost the advantage with throw now, but he's been taken advantage of. 58. 98. Oh, he's left a double. And you require 154. Pressure on then. Again, it's a bit of a dodgy double for Puha having. Had to faff around on double five, double two, and double one. I just wonder if he might consider splitting. Well, whatever, whatever he had in mind, that, that last treble 18 might have changed it again. I think he is going six. Or he's going 10, double 14. Two at it. One at the worst out on the double. I hate that double seven. Just keep leaving himself every double that he doesn't want to throw at. And that is spelling trouble. And it might be Hazel who's happy at, at the break. Now. Last time he went for a 12, he hit a 9. This time he gets the 12. And he gets the dart to win the set. But it's too high. After we saw on the, uh, the double 5, the single 5, this isn't easy. We talk about all these 180s and, and the big trebles, but these single numbers are the ones that can win your games. Up there again. No score. And he's approaching double figures now in terms of set darts. But Hazel has got three more of his own here. Double top to take the set. Can he use that as a guide? He guides it in. And he gives it the big come on. Ben Hazel has turned this set around. It looks like Hopai Puha was going to have it in his pocket, missed several darts to take the set across the last couple of legs. And Hazel just stuck around and finally took his chance when it came. He takes the opening set by three legs to two. And Puha has a lot of work to do. One down against Ben Hazel.
Well, Ben Hazel has taken the first set against Horpai Hopes of Pua. It was a close set, though the most competitive we've seen so far, Paul, on this opening day. Attritional was the word you used when we were watching. Yeah, it's the word I like to use when a game is not at its best, but there's still potential for it in the later sets. But I think Ben's going to go backstage for a few moments now and think, how have I won that set? How has Hopai Pua lost it, more How likely? How did he lose it? Well, he just got too edgy on, on set darts, and that's the set play format that we're playing here at the WDF World Championship, because when you're playing in set play, it's, it's like you're on match darts all the time. You know, trying to clinch these sets, it's a beautiful format, and it really does test your resolve. And so far, Ben Hazel's been more up to it. We could see Pua as well, really disappointed with himself, shaking his, his head a lot throughout that, that first set. How does he now go away and, and address that in this short time he has now? I think one of the things that Hopes does have in his locker is the ability to just forget and relax and move on. He's such a chilled out character, but he's got to get some fire from somewhere, in my opinion. He's got to so, sort of massage the, the demon inside him and say, I've got to deny this guy this game because I've handed him that first set. So he's got to get a bit nasty up there and he's got to take the chances when they come. The momentum, obviously, with Ben Hazel, but can you still see this one going the distance? Yes, I can. I can see Hope by getting the second set, but as for the third set, I think it depends on what kind of set we see. We have seen a lot of improved second sets from men today and, of course, from Ryan as well, but I get the feeling that the Kiwi has... He's got to stop shaking his head. If he does stop that, that's the first job done. But if he gets the first couple of legs of this second set, and I think he'll take the second set and move into the third. Both need a... a high averages really don't they both will be expecting more the amount of doubles that they've missed that's why their averages have tumbled but i think when you played a set like that the last thing on your mind is the average now it's about just getting straight on those treble 20s using your covers well and giving yourself enough opportunities to get over the line and when you get there take it and whoever does make it through to the second round there's going to be a lot of attention on that game because they will be playing luke littler who has the chance of winning the world championship poor though can have a bit of a reset and get himself back into this game. Welcome back to the action here at the lakeside where Ben Hazel has taken a, a scrappy opening set against New Zealand's Hopai Puha. As Lindsay and Paul were talking about, the winner of this match takes on him. Should, should flashes, both of them. Hazel hammered in 3 one forces in the opening set. And they had 12 tons between them. That was probably during the middle of the set, though. There was, there was a little phase there of, of maybe two legs where they both kicked in and played, one. scored well anyway. The finishing just, just wasn't there for either player. Yeah, but Puhad, he seemed to keep relieving really tricky shots didn't he? Kind of a, an example of what you do have to manage the board better because he left double 19, didn't want to go for it we assume that he went for a 6 to leave double 16 missed that hit at 10, left double 40 then he's on double 7, then he's on double 2 and double 1, it just kept happening didn't it? Yeah, just clumsy darts here and there like you say, the board management there's a lot to be, I mean these guys are normally thinking from sort of 300 down what to be throwing for 
in that first set it was sort of around the ton and below they still weren't 100% sure I'm sure they'll put it right they've had a little uh, fire break in the back room 64 you know it's one of the questions that people ask the most what do the players do during a break what were you doing when you walked off stage with your opponent it's quite a strange because one of you is obviously happier than the other one most of the time and, and literally he's, he's two boards over you can see him practicing again and I didn't really throw that many darts in the back room I'd, I'd stand at the table and just you know if things were going well nothing needs to change and sometimes when it's, it's not going well there's not a lot to do about 100% effort in on the stage you can't put any more effort in than that so it's a difficult one it's starting to go well for Hazel here and gone below the treble. Yeah, 78 going. Treble 18 was the shot. Ben Both players just need a couple of clean finishes just to can often block the bed. Well, to be honest, it looked like that happened then. And that double 10. really struggling on the outer ring and it looks like his hopes are fading here at the lakeside Hazel will have to shuffle across slightly but he could actually use that dart as a barrier well I don't know what he's going to do now well, he's, he's coming across the other side it's an exhibition shot this exhibition shot goal <laughs> What a dart that was. Probably from 10 feet, that dart. Back in the day, in the old system, the pin scoring system, where he used to light up the boards on the side, there'd have been a fellow in a box there where he'd have thrown over his head. I remember there used to be an argument for a curved docky, because obviously when you move across in a straight line, you're throwing from further away. I mean, obviously, I've, I've, I've probably said this on air before, but I worked for Alan Evans for a long time, and he used to carry a piece of string with him, which was the exact measurement, because he used to put his toes around the side, and people used to call him a tree, and he did exactly that. He, he did a line with this um, string, and said, that's where the measurement is. And he was quite right. 57. Of course, now the hockeys are a bit wider. Yeah. I wonder what our referee, Anthony Dundas, would have done at Hazel whipped a piece of string out of his pocket there and started moving towards the board. 59. There's some Andreas Harrison fans in. Dirty Harrison in action. Next against Laszlo Kadar. 42. It's a, a beard to behold, isn't it? A few beards to be feared amongst them guys. One hundred and forty. Well, now we're going to see another mid-set surge from the pair of them. A one forty from Puha. Seventy. It's a consulate look there on Big Ben coming back. It's a lonely place up there. When they just won't go, no matter what you try, no matter what, what is in your head, what you're thinking, if they're not going, they're not going. And, and sometimes there's not, you just want to get off the stage. Yeah, he's wearing his emotions on his face, isn't he? Yeah. No buying this. Don't need to guess. But he's feeling disappointed, but he's still got every chance. However, I think this is a must win leg. 60 again. Looking at the 17s. They use the 5 or the ball. And then go upstairs for a nice clean setup shot. 62. Like you said, Chris Poo really needs this. He's touch low with his first dart. Game shot in the second leg, Well, he finds it, 
puts his starting disappointment on hold for now. And he does have the darts in leg three, cancelling out that break of throw. Maybe, just maybe, he can start to get a little bit more confident. I think these games like this, you just need a bit of success somewhere, something good to happen. And believe it or not, just one double could change things. He's got to be positive now, though. Positive starts. Positive darts from Puha, who had been poor up to now. And he does have success. He's won 18 ranking titles down under on the DPA and DPNZ circuit. Then again, even Paul Nicholson's won a few of those. <laughs> that wouldn't be in the last five or six years, though, would it? I mean, uh, it's getting tougher everywhere throughout the world. He's, uh, his ranking systems are so tough. And the best example is uh, Damon Hetter that's come over here, absolutely ripping trees up everywhere he plays. Yeah, of course, Simon Whitlock, a former finalist on this stage, hit a nine darter yesterday in a Pro Tour event. So, 108, another one, well, a single 19, rather. Again, the big pause. Will it be followed by the big applause? 76. Well, you would think this isn't going to go the way they've been finishing. Well, he made your point rather emphatically there. Oh, Hasn't really taken much out of that. And hope I will be feeling much happier. Again, trying to read the body language of the players. It's now Hazel whose shoulders have slumped. 97. The cheeks are flushed a bit there as well. I've been there, I felt it. Sometimes, if it's not going, you feel a bit embarrassed. It's exactly what that first was then. And the harder he tries, sometimes the worse it can get. Very, very different picture from the face of the man approaching the hockey now, was giving himself a bit of a talking to, ready to get going again. It's been much more neat and tidy in the last couple of legs. 140. Returns a tidy score there. It's actually got a really nice action. It's uh, metronomic. Trying to use that dart below the bed. Often you would switch, but he thought he could platter one in off it. Switches with the last one. Watching, but Ben's just got to get in his head that if he loses this set, it's only one all. He's still in there, he's still got a chance. Yeah, we've been talking about players turning up and trying to enjoy it. Well, to be honest, neither of these men really look like they're enjoying themselves in this match. Both of them at times stomping around the stage, sulking a little bit. And you're right, they're right in the meat of the match here. There's nothing is won or lost yet. Exactly. Well, I, require 112. I just think 
thinking about the game still. Literally left to finish, you never know. Well, that's tricky. There is another option here. Could go for the treble 18. Not many players utilise that shot. Maybe because Hazel is on such a big finish. He felt like staying there. And he will come back with three darts in hand to wrap up the set and level the match. Yeah, he's probably confident when he looks at the score then. Ben still wanting one six four. He's confident he'd be back. And he's got to prove he was right to level the match. Markers. Well. Perhaps overthought it a little bit. And now Hazel can level the set, and that's how quickly it can change. He'll stay there to get a dart at the same double, but couldn't hunt down the treble. He's tidied it up well, but will he get a shot again? I hope I will hope to see this fly straight in the double six because he doesn't want to get back to the habits of earlier in the match and it he has gone straight in set. and Puha does take the second set squares up this match and for the first time for the 2022 Lakeside World Championship we have a deciding set it's almost as if you knew what you were talking about Tony when you called it at the start of this match no, I heard Paul say it earlier <laughs> but there's no celebration or anything there from Puha you can, you can sense that he's not happy, even though he's just won a set. He should be ecstatic. He just doesn't have the feeling that things are going to improve. He, he knows there's going to be a battle now for the next five legs. Yeah, it really has been a fight. Are we about to see the first maximum? There is the answer. It's better late than never, Chris. Confirmation that 4 of 5 remaining for Puha after that first visit. 81. And again, the demeanour changes. For Ben Hazel, who in truth looked like he'd given up hopes in the previous 81. set, but has just hit the reset button for the last set, fired in the first maximum of the match, and he's taking the game to his opponent. First little smile there as well. One He's loving life at the lake side, finally. He'll be loving life if he takes this out, which he might. Treble 19. Well, he's going to leave it nice and handy. 97. To be honest, during the previous two sets, they've been nice and handy on quite a few occasions and uh, never panned out that way. 60. Fifty-two. Let's see if he can get rid of that kind of habit. Double top. One high, but one in. And one up. In the third and final set of this first round tie. The winner, remember to take on the 15-year-old sensation Luke Littler in round two. We've already had sensation here at the Lakeside as Jared Cole stunned Martin Adams in the opening match of the tournament. Johnny Haynes then beat John Scott and Rihanna O'Sullivan got the women's tournament underway with a well-earned win against Paula Jacqueline. Be the most uh, impressive win of the day, that to be honest, we are. Great to see her back. Yeah, and she's got an incredible record here at the lakeside, it is quite astonishing. 133. Reaching two finals. And just three visits here before. She's definitely a contender. And I actually think in the 
women's tournament, it's slightly easier to pick who are the contenders. I'm not quite sure, to be honest, in the men's tournament. You know, people are talking about the likes of Connor Scott, and some people even think that Luke Littler could go all the way, but people were talking about Martin Adams, and he's already gone. Yeah, 59. And some of the form he showed in the last few months, and, you know, quite rightly, people were talking about him winning it. Put the nine darters down at Modus League, and uh, the times during that them weeks where he hit the nine darts that he could have had others as well. He, he's just phenomenal. Yeah, Adam's one of the players that used that live league to prepare for this tournament. Didn't go the way he wanted, but Johnny Haynes certainly seemed to do the trick. I know that Makuru Suzuki was down there playing in that last week. He's had a couple of brilliant victories this week. But I'd be surprised, if, if I'm honest, if, if the winner didn't come from somebody who'd been doing well than me. Mike Warburton and James Richardson are two of my uh, well, pre-tournament fancy players, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them went ahead and won it. Some smashing, smashing averages. 14. Something that's certainly replicatable in the first matches, at least, with such a short format here. Well, Puha has worked his way down to 113 in a laboured leg. It's a match that really needs something to... Spark the crowd, spark the occasion, and this could be it. Second time he's drifted to the left, going for the ball. 16s to 8s, but that can cause a problem, did for Puha there. No score. The hopes are fading. Double 16 for Ben Hazel to take a stride towards the second round. He hasn't blocked the double eights. He's found the double eight and he finds himself 2 0 up in the final sets. Up and it is down. The happy Eagle. Hazel, look at him. Grinning like a Cheshire cat. And why wouldn't you be? The darts like this. 140. You could see in his first day, he probably thought, today's definitely my day. It's not been good, it's not been pretty. Too closely fought sets, but this one looks like Hazel might breeze through it, looking really comfortable now, and Puha looking anything but. 19. Obviously, the most important leg of the match so far will probably be the last one. He's done it in regulation darts, a nice 140, a nice ton. Yeah. Well, back that up now. 29 and 59. All that his opponent's able to muster up with his first two 100. visits. He may not get many more visits. Even Hazel could afford to see the funny side. He might now produce a showpiece checkout. The ball to win in style. 130. In a lovely way to finish the match. He's showing us how far away from the ball.
Well, it was far away from the ball, but he's not far away from the finish line now. 97. Ben Yudemeyer, 31. Twenty-nine remaining. Double ten. Eleven. He's not making it easy for himself. Any sort of score here from Puha, and uh, the pressure's on again. Yeah, and there were other options there as well. If he goes inside on double ten when he comes back, then he could start to get into a sticky situation. Obviously, it was just that clumsy dart. He's aiming for 15 double eight. 79. Ben in the wire, 20. If he wanted double eight, he could have gone for 13, couldn't he? Exactly. He knows better than us what he likes, but he has gone inside. He can't come inside on that. But he hasn't. Hazel hits. Hazel wins. And Puha's hopes disappear on his debut at the lakeside. It's Ben Hazel who lost when he played in 2020 in London, but he wins at the home of World Darts. And in the end, he is a very, very happy man. Didn't look like it for much of the match. The pair of them struggled through that. It was the closest contest we've had so far in the first round. We've still got Amanda Harwood and Marilyn Noyans to come and Andreas Harrison against Laszlo Kadar next. But in this one, it was Ben Hazel who got over the line in a deciding set. Hazel goes through at the expense of Puha and will take on the 15-year-old sensation Luke Littler in round two.
Welcome back to day one at the Lakeside. After dropping the second set, it was a strong finish from Ben Hazel to knock out Hall Pai Pua to win by two sets to one. Here he is. Ben, congratulations. Uh, not maybe your best game, but you got the win. That's all that matters. It's the W at the end. You can't always play well. You just have to grind some games out, and that's what I've done. And yeah, got the win. That's all that matters. On to the next round. And on to the next round. You fancying your chances of upping your game there? Yeah, that won't happen again. But it's first time nerves flat back here, so I now know what to expect. That won't happen again. What did you think of the whole experience of getting up there on the stage here? It's quality. It's the home of darts. It's what everyone wants to do when they're little. So you sort of grew up watching this on telly and here you are. Yeah. Zip Hills. that. I came here three years ago to watch it, wanting to come here, and then it went to the O2. Now I'm glad it's back in. I finally can get on that stage and throw darts. Are you sort of thinking at this stage, well, it's anybody's here to win. I've got the win, so I'm ahead, and as long as I'm in it, I can win it. Right, that's it. You've got to be in the competition to win it, don't you? So I'm still in it, so that won't happen again. It's only going to get better from this, so, yeah, bring on the next game. Good. Move on. Well, yes, thank you. Cheers. Well, he's wanted to do this since he was little, but not only has Ben Hazel now played darts on this famous stage at Lakeside, but he's won here. He's through to the second round. What did you think of the way you finished that match? Because it was very competitive. First set, he shouldn't have won it, quite frankly. His second, seat, second set, he didn't win it. And you're thinking at this point, I don't know who's going to win this match. So to come out and win that third set by three legs to nil tells you something about what Ben Hazel can do. I think the biggest separator for those two players was the fact that Ben has won on a World Championship stage previously. Yes, it wasn't here. And Hopai Poa has played at Alexandra Palace before and lost there as well. So maybe the experience of getting over the line has got him over the line today. How disappointed will Poa be with that? Hugely because he's worked so hard, he's traveled further than anybody else to get to this point and to have that kind of performance. Unfortunately, he's leaving with his tail between his legs. He has to go back to New Zealand and rebuild. And next up for Ben Hazel, it's 15-year-old Luke Littler, who's looking to win the World Championships here. At the age of just 15, there's so much hype around him coming into this competition and, and there will be around that game. How do you think Ben will deal with that? I think it's really good that Ben Hazel's got the experience of winning on the stage ahead of playing Luke Littler, but Luke will be a heavy favourite in that game because he's playing at a higher level right now. But there's huge pressure on Luke from himself and from the people around him. They may not be putting pressure on him, but that's the way it's going to feel for Luke. They call him the Nuke, which is a very interesting nickname, but things are going to be set alight when he comes here because he's exciting. Yeah, it is Luke the Nuke next for Ben Hazel. Ben through to the second round at Lakeside. And up next, the game's coming thick and fast. And in our next match for you, it is Andreas Harrison against Lajlo Kadar. It's Dirty Harry up against the teacher. And Paul, is this one for the darting hipsters? Unquestionably, it's definitely a game for me because I love to see the fact that Andreas is back in a World Championship match. He's had success before. He's played some very good stuff over the last two or three years. But Kadar from Romania flying the flag for a country that hasn't had anybody represent him here before. It's a big time for Lajlo, and he's playing well the last 18 months with two big wins on his circuit. Mm. So this is a very tight one to call. Yeah, a lot of people looking forward to this one. It certainly stands out in that draw. So let's hand you back to your MC. It's all yours, Richard Ashdown. Ladies and gentlemen, let's continue here on the opening day of the 2022 Lakeside WDF World Championships and introduce to the stage the man from Romania making his Lakeside debut. He's a former Slovakian Open champion, the teacher, Laszlo Kada.
It's a second world championship appearance for Dirty Harrison. He's a former Finland Open champion. Sweden's Andreas Well, here we go. Andreas Harrison against Lassio Kadar. We just have to uh, do a little bit of research on the walk on tunes. Well, Lassio just wasn't too tricky, was it? That was final countdown by Europe. I remember that one. But now I bet you didn't know the other one, Tony. It was Black Rose by Volbeat. Uh, it's not on my playlist, put it that way. <laughs> I tell you what. Andreas not only is a Volbeat fan, he's also put some serious attention into growing that beard. Kadarfs, 53 years old, the teacher. His first time here, so he'll be feeling a bit of pressure and wanting to make a really impressive opening appearance here at the Lakeside. Harrison, Dirty Harry, WDF ranked number 17. Got into the last 32 of the 2020 World Championship where he beat John O'Shea before losing out to Wesley Harms. Three time Swedish champion in 2017, 18, and 90, emulating a couple of well known names from years gone by Stefan Lord and Magnus Karis. Swedish doubt in loyalty there. He's been the Swedish number one for a few years now. First won the Scandinavian Singles Championship in 2016. And I wonder who's he Thank who's you, ladies and gentlemen. dealing first with set, the pressure the better. Neither of them speak great English. Well, having said that, I don't speak great Romanian and great Swedish, so, you know... He speaks 180s, that's the main thing. What a start. It's a few years back now, but Dirty Harry made a few visits over to these shows, played quite a few events, pretty short and at Bridlington there. Always did well. well four perfect darts. And he's making a great start to this opening leg. And playing with a smile on his face. Well, the top lip is, we can't see the bottom one. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a ZZ top tribute act. <laughs> Sharp dressed man. Well, he's on a finish already after nine darts. Let's see what he can make of this 121. Kadar a long way back. Made an indifferent start to this match. Oh, he's gone that way. That's a 25. And this is the. Oh, it is, that's a 25. It didn't hit it. Uh, it was 18. Yeah. But he was going the 25, treble 20, double 18 route. Yeah. 16. It was blocked out by the little graphic. We couldn't actually see where that dart finished. And dart tops here. Would have been a lovely opening leg. Still firmly in control. Double ten when he returns. Sixty. Just inside. Just inside again. Decided to split it. Bust it for that throw. I go back to double ten. I know you said earlier on. Tony, that sometimes in matches in legs you can almost have too many darts 
at your disposal and you cease to concentrate and before you know where you are you're suddenly, it's suddenly under a bit of pressure double ten surely now and it's keep shot the first edged his way in used the, the first two Second line yeah, that's all that matters as long as you, you tidy it up after your mess which he did good opening leg settle him down a bit that's that, that last match, I mean, Ben was sort of shrugging his shoulders when he came off as much as to say, well, how did I win playing like that? But, you know, it's the W which counts in these first leg matches. That's all that matters. Averages don't win your matches. Hitting that last double, he, he did actually play quite well the last set. He knows he can improve. We know he's a better player than that. He will improve because it's a case of having to. Little Luke's in such good form. Here we go again, looking for number two. One of This time. Fifty-eight. You see it so many times, players in the back back room there, just behind the stage, practicing, looking at everything. Hammer that treble, but come up on stairs. It takes a few legs. One Harry's right into it here. Well, and, and for. Lazio, it's his first time on that stage, first time in front of the crowd. You know, he wouldn't be human if he wasn't feeling it a little bit. Not showing it, though, John. 121. He's gone for 25 again, he's hit it this time. He's in 36. Yeah, he's got it. He's got a lovely check out. What do you think about going for 121 that way? I mean, obviously, the young Dutch players sort of started this off about 10 years ago back in the day it was always Martin Adams' natural route treble 21st I mean well, I still go that 40. way whether it's an age thing I don't know but, but modern dart players now they use every single segment on the dartboard and, and they start with some crazy trebles to be honest but they get the job done that's why they, they're the elite players these days some research on one of the players who's Taking part later on, he was left on 120, and instead of going to Shanghai, he went treble 20, treble a uh, double 20, double 20, double 20. Well, we've seen that recently. Uh, it was D'Souza did it recently, and uh, now everyone's having a go at it. <laughs> 81. But, but logically, it's not a bad way to go. The, well, it's a bigger target. The target's isn't it? bigger, exactly. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of people know when they, when they want the 82. I, whether again, it's a bit old-fashioned, but treble treble 14 was always my day. Well, the ball became popular, so I switched, but I need to hit the treble 14 a bit more often, I think. <laughs> Stick to what you know. <laughs> well, Harrison moving towards the set here, if he can tuck this one away. 45. Well, he's not going to finish, but a healthy lead. It. But Harrison will have the first attempt to check out. And he's in there again. The team would have you. left him tops. He'll settle for that though. Forty-five. Oh dear. That is not what he was intending. Seventy-six. He's got it. Double eight for the set. Should be a decent marker. Oh, he's missed by a whisker. He's missed by about four million whiskers. One hundred. Double Well, he's had four darts so close yeah, and finally gets the it there. Set. And Andreas Harrison, he was the favourite to win this one, and he's showing that. He takes the opening set and moves into the lead.
kick off the day session here at Lakeside. Andreas Harrison taking the first set against Lajo Kadar of Romania in that one. Took it quite easily as well, Paul, didn't he? He showed a lot of composure in that first set. I think Kadar was caught in headlights a little bit with this great occasion that he's got this Saturday afternoon. But I think Harrison, with all of his experience, he's played on the European Tour in the PDC. He's played at the O2, of course, in the previous championship. And I just think that experience is told in that first set. If Kadar does not come out of the blocks in set two, this is going to be over quickly. Is Harrison one of those players who, who delivers his best stuff when he's on the big stages? I think he does. Uh, he, he's been one of the best players in Sweden for a good five years now, but it's a regular thing for him to make these kind of championships. And I think this is just another tick on the box of the career of Andreas Harrison, who has what we've got to say is one of the best beards in sport. Never best, mind darts. Best beard in darts, would you say? I think that's debatable. I think maybe Simon Whitlock and a couple of others might have a word with me if I said to the, uh, to the other guy, but... Yeah, this is just a good performance so far. If he raises his game a little bit more in set two, then this will be over within three or four legs. He's given Dumbledore a run for his money, that's for sure. You're a big fan of the walk-on, Paul. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Scandinavian music, especially when it's a bit hard rock style. Volbeat are a massive band in Denmark, and obviously he's a big fan coming from that kind of part of the world, but... Yeah, anybody who walks out of Volby's got my vote. Had to try and stop you rocking out before you made a <laughs> fool of yourself. Kadar, though, did win the, the Slovak Open not too long ago and, and won another big tournament recently as well. So he'll be trying to draw on all that experience to try and get back into this match. Yeah, anybody who wins the Abitin Open in Serbia has got a lot of attention for me because great players go to that tournament, the likes of Boris Kruchma from Croatia and some other people from the Balkans. But he's won the Slovak Open in 2022 as well. And there were some great players in that field. It wasn't a sort of B or C grade field. It was a top grade field. People wanted to be there. And for him to win that tournament, we have to take notice. But obviously, he hasn't brought that game here today so far. Well, let's see if he can in this second set. Welcome back to Lakeside, isn't it nice to be able to say that? After the breakaway, the WDF Lakeside World Darts has returned to Frimley Green and it's the first afternoon of competition and this is a match between this man, the Romanian Lazio Kadar and big Andreas Harrison, Dirty Harry from Melilla in Sweden and he won that first set pretty easily averaged 84 but that's average affected by a lot of missed doubles Kadar hasn't really settled only averaging 70 and he needs more of this that's going to make him feel better the break came at the right time for Kadar Go out and refocus. Give himself a bit of a talking to, maybe take on a bit of refreshment, whatever. Ready to go and hoping to improve on what he produced in the first set. Uh, he was so impressive scoring wise in that first set. It was, uh, it was difficult for Kadar to get in the game anyway, but starting off well this second set. 43. As ever, they've come from far and wide. 
Well, there's one of the Romanian fans posting their support for Kara. He'll need plenty of support if he's going to get back in this match. Romanian Darts Federation, big support of World Darts. Had a couple of invites, I've been there a couple of times. Fantastic uh, outfit, and the game's growing. You can see how players are coming through. First one ever from Romania. I'm sure there'll be more. Another really significant visit from Harrison, leaving himself on a good finish. Kadar wanted that, wanted that treble. 18 wasn't able to and find it, but he manages to line. get himself out of the mire with a quite brilliant Second treble 20 double 16 and so yeah. takes a leg at last. Yeah, a great leg it was from both players, to be honest. Apart from them, a few doubles, it's been a good game to watch. this distinctive figure he's only 46 years old seven years younger than his Romanian adversary well, he's got good players approaching the 50s that will soon be able to qualify for the seniors we have to start looking for a super seniors You hit the big 6 0 yet, Tony? Are you ready for the next yeah. level? 61 this year, mate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, a couple of weeks, actually. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Harrison looking good for the holder throw. 176 from here and looking to leave it with something straightforward well he'd have loved to have had the treble 20 wouldn't he but it just just drifts wide he's looking for treble 19 there Trouble 18 would have put him on to 16s. Like the bullseye first, leaves him 85. Trouble 15. Just a bit, that. He's killed it out. What a brilliant check out that is. Best of the match. One of the best of the day. He got that treble 15 for his second dart. And in it went. And suddenly, the game has a rather different look to it. Some great finishing. What he said to himself at the uh, break worked. Finish. I think that was pretty fine. Check out we've seen today, isn't it? Finishing, that's sure. Two legs have been of 135. He's got a nice lead in this leg. Darts has just gone through the roof. Kenner has certainly upped his game since the interval, averaging over a ton since he came back. And there's another brilliant checkout 112, 135, and now that one 96. And he takes the set and squares up the match, and so it goes to the decider. As the man said, very much game on. 
100% finishing in that set. First start every leg. Oh, who do you money be on now? I suppose the momentum's with the Romanian. We spoke about earlier when you're behind and, and, you, and you lose and you relax a little. Now it's back to parity, the pressure changes back again. And what was flowing less than five minutes ago now is tightening up again. Because he realises he can win the game, yeah? Exactly. He's probably thinking, what a great first set, what a start 30 Harry had, and, and that's probably it. Dirty Harry with the edge and experience. One of his mates down the local call him Dirty. Hello, mate. Dirty's coming. in. You'd expect it from an American rapper, but <laughs> not a Viking. <laughs> Plenty of Viking fans around. Got his supporters here. Missed the big 16. Now tops, just one dart. 16. Love Keep this run of big finishes going. Tops, he might have to get this. Sneaks it in the bottom corner. That was a great set of darts. His first dart, because his darts lying flat, literally covered the, the double 20, so he fell short. Got a great tidy up at the end, that great double turn. He did start the leg, so it's just a hold. Voice of Tony O'Shea alongside me in the commentary box, if you're wondering about those wise Lancastrian tones. Third maximum. I'm from Cheshire, mate. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Stockport, it's straight to Manchester, isn't it? Uh, well, it's Cheshire. It? It's Cheshire on my postcode. Yeah, right. I'm being well and truly corrected here. No, it probably is great, man. But us that live in Stockport, on that side of Stockport, say <laughs> Cheshire. <59. laughs> Sounds posh, yeah. <laughs> it's an age old argument, John. <laughs> I stand corrected. Oh no, you're probably right. I'm just making <laughs> <laughs> just making me feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> I played darts for Cheshire for since 1990, but actually started for Lancashire back in early 80s, 82, 82. You haven't played much on the old log ends up there. Um, I did play a few games. Old Johnny Gwynn's favourite dartboard. Yeah. Saw John not too long back. He's uh, he's looking well, the lad. Good. Good. Probably watching right now. Yeah, nice to hear your voice being mentioned, John. I hope you're going well. He's had his health battles, as darts fans will know, and he's a fighter. 87. Well tidied up. He had plenty of time there, that's why Harry went the other way. Left that tops again, though. Here we go for 2 0. Well, this is big. Really be a body uh, blow and he lands it. The Cadar's in trouble now. Third leg and somebody is to throw first. The big kick is pulled. Some nerves in. I if we're going to have a bit of a Devon Rock moment. Looks as though he's heading to the finishing line, but you never got it there until you land those winning darts. Oh, 
100. Three quality darts for just a ton then. He throws with the really thick flights and uh, I think he just blocked it out. Oh, Not like them three. Brilliant oh, darts for Oswald. Brilliant. It's the fifth of the match and Kadar's second. Do the treble here. He gets them to order. That's a good last dart. Eighty-two coming up. We'll be able to see uh, how he goes that way. Is it going to be the bullseye? One hundred. That's the norm well, these days, but well, I still always think he's going to ball. Seventeen for tops. Big, big dart for Kadar, yeah, and he's taken it beautifully. Responding to the pressure and getting the check out he needed. There's a lot of sense actually going for the bullseye, despite personal preferences. When the 14 route, if you don't hit that, you're usually going to end up trying for the bull, which again is a problem. Going that way, 25, 17, he just made it look how easy it can be. If Bobby George was sitting here alongside me, he'd be saying, well, if you go for 25, you're aiming at the bull and hoping for a miss. That's his, that's his way of looking at it. It's amazing how many times you go for a 25 and you do it in the ball, so It's amazing how often that actually happens. Always when you don't really want it. Still the same situation. Harrison takes this leg and he is into the next round. Kadar has to get this one to keep his hopes alive. And it's nip and tuck. 60. Oh, this is good. What a great oh, time to get your third maximum. Fifteen in the tournament have been six in this match. Shanghai needed. It's now a blocker. Treble. Oh, it's a big blocker that one, Tony. He'll be back. Oh, that was a freebie. That he may have been aiming for the tops. 65. So for two all, tops, two darts in hand. Yeah, An airingly the accurate there. This has been superb. We get the first set since then. Kadar's finishing has been amazing. All down to the decider. Big Andreas with the darts. Will that be a crucial factor? Could be. Just a little bit of jitters, maybe. One of the M40. Tough man. Finding it when it counted. Bit of that tension there that you're talking about, Tony. Yeah, it's another example of it. The game seesawing back again. And Andreas is moving in. And he's on a finish. Great leg so far. He tons one of them at ton 40. A nice 161. One of the new 40. It's more like it now. Andreas doesn't have to go for this if he leaves himself on the on the bull. Well, it's immaterial now, it's just the setup. 
last start. There's a lot of psych psychological uh, interference there. He's at the 25 to bring it low below, below the, the ton. Just puts it in his mind. He's actually on that finish now. He's on a two data. Triple 20, double 18. He's got the single. Triple 20 for double eight. Just overcompensated. 56. But he's got time. I've said that a few times today, haven't we? Just a bit. So many legs. The player's been so far ahead. 58. Well, he's still not on a finish. So six darts to find a way to get rid of this 40. Double 10. 20. There go three of them. Becoming imperative now that Harrison gets Number this one. He's had 19 darts in this leg. The 21st is crucial. Ten. Well, I never. It was his to lose, and has he done Number precisely that? 40. indeed and Kedar comes from behind in his first ever trip to the lakeside Andreas Harrison threw really well in parts but at the end he just couldn't find the double that he needed Kadar hung on in there got himself back and puts it away and so moves through into the next leg and that's where we say goodbye to our viewers on quest and staying with us on Eurosport and Discovery Plus, the news of this match is that Lazio Kadar of Romania is through into the next round. Marilyn, about to make your debut at the Lakeside World Championship. Just sum up how you're feeling right now. I'm feeling good, actually. Uh, look forward to it. You uh, came through the qualifier over in Assen in the Netherlands. How difficult was it to qualify for the event? Uh, I had some tough games, and uh, yeah, finally I get through. And yeah, I was, I was really happy that I win it, won it. Obviously, there's a record prize fund for the women's game this year. Just give us a few thoughts on how strong the ladies' game is right now. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of good, good lady dark players, and it's keep coming up, and more people, are, yeah, more ladies are going to the tournaments, and it's good to see that. And you've got Amanda Harwood in the first round. Somebody you've played before, I think you met in a final once. Is that right? That's right. Uh, in the final in the Romanian Open, I think. It was in, yeah, in Romania. Uh, it was a tough game and uh, I lost that game. So uh, I'm going to try for the, for the payback. So is it going to go your way today? Sorry? Is it going to go your way today? I hope so. I hope so. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much.
Amanda, you've been getting a bit of the uh, a bit of the lakeside experience actually out there in the crowd. Yes, I have. I've been joining in with the Welsh party who have been sharing on Rianne, and all my friends are sitting out there. Didn't Rianne play well? Oh, she played awesome. Yep. Yeah, and, she really did. And you'll be hoping for more, obviously, similar yourself. What sort of form are you in? Not too bad, obviously, with things being the way they are. I haven't been too much match play, but I have been practising and I have been going to tournaments. So, um, hopefully, fingers crossed. It's the same it's for everybody. I mean, there's one or yeah. two of the big names who are not here for various reasons. Yeah. So the women's tournament's a little bit more open than sometimes in the past. Yes, very, very and um, looking at the way the draw is going so far, um, Rianne's done what she's had to do. I'm just hoping to do the same. <laughs> Get out there and do it. Good luck. Yes, thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> thank you. In a battle between Sweden and Romania here at the Lakeside, Lajlo Kadar has beaten Andreas Harrison in a last leg decider which went down to the wire. We can hear from him now with Chris Murphy. Lajlo, congratulations. Thank you very much. Coming back from behind in that match, how do you feel after that? Uh, <laughs> I feel very, 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 very nice. When you lost the first set 3-0, how did you regroup to come back so well in the second set? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I concentration on maximum. And when you were stood behind watching Andreas mismatch darts, what were you thinking then? I, I hope, I hope, I hope. I'm sorry for Andreas because he's a very good player, but uh, you, uh, Andreas unlucky, I lucky. Come, coming here to Lakeside, what are your hopes? What do you think you can do at this tournament? Forty. And you're a very happy man tonight. How are you going to celebrate? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I have many uh, many friends here. Uh, first, uh, my wife, uh, Vlad, and my friends, and my. Uh, uh, first win for Romania. First win in Romania. Come on, Romania. Come on, Helios. Come on, Laszlo. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. Thank you. Laszlo doing it for Romania here in Frimley Green. He's got plenty of support here. But I guess the question, Paul, is how did Andreas Harrison lose that match? Shouldn't have lost it. Obviously, in the first set, he was in control. Maybe he was thinking that he was going to come back after the break and just roll over Laszlo, but full credit to Laszlo in that second set. He was a completely different player. And after that, Andreas turned over again and said, all right, I've got to do a job here. He did the job apart from hitting the last match shot. He missed six match darts. Unfortunately for Laszlo, after that 140 approach in the last leg, it was enough pressure on the Swede so he would miss and Laszlo would get one chance, which he took. Do you think the experience of recently winning the Slovak Open really helped him to, to lift his game on the big stage under a pressure situation like this? Confidence is something that can be built. It's not something you can buy or just find out of thin air. So his confidence has been building over the last 18 months. Obviously, it's culminated enough to give him the opportunity of coming here. He said it. He was a bit lucky. As we say in darts, he was a bit milky 
But the fact of the matter is, you've got to give yourself a chance. He got one chance, he took it, Andreas couldn't. Yeah, he used that milk, made a good brewery through to the second round. Richard Vainstrap for him as well in round two. But our last match of the day session is on the way and it's back to the women's draw. And it is Amanda with the best name, the Panda Harwood, who has qualified for the World Championships for the first time. And she is up against Marjolein Noyens from the Netherlands, a player she's beaten Paul before to lift the Romanian classic. Amanda, then, do you think will be feeling this is a really good draw for her? She will, because obviously she's beaten her before. So on this occasion, she's thinking just repeat history. And from this point, I can go and play against Maria O'Brien in the next round. For Marjolein here, it's a very different experience. She's never had anything like this before, but we've got to say as well with Amanda, this is her debut, so this one could be a bit edgy the way it was with Hazel and Pua. Well, Marjolein might be looking for a bit of revenge here at Lakeside. Well, the main man is back on the stage, so let me hand you back to Little Richard. Ladies and gentlemen, we conclude our afternoon session here at the opening day of the 2022 WF World Championships. We introduce to... on a lakeside stage, not an easy job. And the players always we can blag it. I didn't mean to go for that. <laughs> Straight in the treble 20. Noyans has been absolutely excellent in the first couple of visits. Okay, so then Marilyn did speak about maybe trying to get a bit of revenge on the biggest stage in women's darts. Well, it's always nice to have a game plan, and uh, she starts off if, if that is it. 
I'm going to win this one. I don't know how close it was the, the previous meeting, but I do remember uh, Amanda first coming on the scene a few years ago and, and she was building the head of steam up just before yes. lockdown. Obviously, same as everyone else, she was stopped in the tracks a bit, but she was making great headways and uh, obviously got a big future ahead of her. 83. I have seen Amanda a couple of times playing in the BDC Women's Series events. She does have four ranking titles to her name, including that one I mentioned in Romania, which she won six years prior. In fact, the two titles, the four titles that she's got, are both events that she's won twice, yeah. Romania and Lithuania. Treble 20 is found there, so double 16 for Noyans to take the first leg in style. Well, Amanda hit a 140 last shot, but it's not left her a finish. She could have gone the 19 route to leave 170, but I think just had in red, just put pressure on. Oh, too high. Easy, he's switching double 11, right? Was that? Does it matter if you've got a last dart like that, though? Good solid leg of darts, that. The Moyans, who may have settled down a little after it. There were quite a few panda fans, weren't they, on the walk on? Plenty of hands shaken and fist bumps from Amanda, who's determined to enjoy her day on the lakeside stage, whether it is a day or whether it becomes more than that. It can distract you a little bit, them walk-ons. I mean, obviously, if you've got the music that people love and they want, want to touch your light, it's got to be done. It's all part of the game these days, a bit of a razzmatazz. And the fans have turned out in the fancy dress, as is almost obligatory. Vikings. I haven't actually seen the full panda. I'm disappointed that one of Amanda's family haven't come in the full panda suit. It's quite warm in here, though. I don't think anyone <laughs> would volunteer that. Maybe outside watching tennis or something. City. Well, of course, it's usually January when we're at the lakeside. The Temperature a little bit milder. City. People still arriving in snow yesterday, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy over weather, isn't it? We've had all seasons. And we've had all types of matches so far today. As I was saying, the most dramatic in the previous one. A bit of a slug between Ben Hazel and Hopai Puha before that. And then very impressive wins for Rihanna Sullivan, Jared Cole and Johnny Haynes. All progressing through to the second round in this opening session. Another six matches to come this evening, of course. All of the first round will be played out by the end of tomorrow. And there are the Panda Posse. They had 26 off, should we go for treble 20? Yes. Yeah. Right, last doubt was for treble 16, which would have left a 24. Fraction to the right. Another there to get a dart at tops. Having to try and navigate the barricades. But in it goes. An 80 checkout for Amanda Harwood. And it's pandemonium at the lakeside. those titles that Amanda has. Noyans are opponent without a title to her name, but notably did reach the semi-finals of the British Open back in 2017. 
And she lost to the eventual winner, Corinne Hammond, having beaten Dieter Hedman 4 0 in the last 16. No mean feat that. That's something that doesn't happen very often, Dieter oh, losing 4 0. Hedman is the number one seed for the Women's World Championship, and I'm sure there would be many people that would begrudge her a title finally. And she's literally won everything else. So, um, yeah, multiple times. Yeah. This would just finish that CV off nicely, wouldn't it? And she's actually playing as well as she's ever played as well, to be honest. So, uh, still plenty of time, to be honest. And the winner of this match would face Maria O'Brien in the last 16. semi-finalist herself Stephen with 25 would have left her on a finish there. Shows that she's got a wits about her. Good board management again. So close. It's a two left. Will she go the bull again or will she go the O'Shea way? Took off one in hand, that's the way I'd have gone, but that's the way. Merv King used to always go that way as well. Yeah, which is bizarre for Merv, because he usually does everything he can to leave double 16. Yeah, three in hand when he wants 80, he goes treble 16 again, doesn't he? Well, he might only be a dart at the bolt. Can Amanda Harwood push the button? 43. I mean, a timely break there for Amanda. She wanted to pop that ball out. I'm trying to tidy it up. After a decent attempt on the bullseye, just has to try and hit the big number. She's managed that bit. And as is often said, feels like the hardest bit. Double eight. Not bad darts at all. She's missing by tiny margins. No score. Until now. Well, she just seemed like she's playing the steadier darts of the pair. But the bit that really matters is hitting the double and the important start of the scoreline. And Noyan's leads in that department. Been accompanied to the practice room by the number three seed, a fellow Dutch woman, Anka Zilstra, who will be in action in the second round against either Priscilla Steenbergen or Darlene Van Sluen. That match what? taking place this evening. A real uh, international flavour about the World Championships this year. It is something that the WDF has tried to make sure they carry on fully global representatives in the tournament. 
and I think one of the big things that the WDF have rightly got a lot of praise for is introducing the increased field for the women and a record-breaking prize fund for the women as well. Yeah, it's a true world championships now. So many years it was, it was British-based, I mean, I'd even go as far as to say a British bias back in the day, a long time ago, true, but just shows now that all the countries are worldwide, they're catching us up. Holland has always been a, a hotbed for darts and I think Barnabel's got to take a lot of the credit for that to be honest. Maryland one of a handful of Dutch women in the field as well. Made in the draft the fourth and final one that I haven't mentioned and certainly will be a run at in this tournament. She's been given a run for her money here by Amanda Harwood who once again has left herself in a promising position. And that'll help Amanda's cause. It's time for tops. Here's the first one. Well, you can see the disappointment in that dart being wayward, but shouldn't do too much damage as long as her opponent stays away from the treble, which she has. So three for double 16. She moves across the opening to get to the closer to the double 16. You see players do that when they're trying to get past darts that are blocking them, but she, like some players do, opted to do it just to get that little bit nearer to it, and it did the trick. Literally, just before that, you could see her close her eyes and, and really concentrate, and I mean, that was quality, that. She just took that little fraction of a second to steady herself, and perfect two shot. So 2-2 two, two. in this opening set. It's probably deserved to go to a, a last leg decider in this set. Entertaining game. 100. Two players who were full of smiles on the approach of stage, but now in the battle of a last leg decider for set one, it really is full focus for the pair of them as it should be. The game faces now. Howard has had a treble and a wayward dart in both of her visits so far in this leg. But it's a, a hat trick of wayward darts that time. It just opens the door for Noyans. Noyans had the start in this uh, last leg. So well ahead again. Keeping herself in it. One thing that's obvious, Amanda's a fighter. 100. I'll avoid the obvious Kung Fu Panda pun. <laughs> Teed it up for and everything. 53. Well, well, still fighting, but nothing she can do. If Noyans lands a knockout blow. Well, that's a disaster. 99 problems after that dart in the one. 73. Harwood. What a big finish. There's some way to announce herself on the lakeside stage. And again, the misses on the trebles are not far away at all. He's going to put some pressure on. That's what 73 treble that in with the ideal dart. 137. Superb set of shots. Done well to find the three. Just glanced over at a score there to check that maybe suggests she's a little bit unsettled. But it she finds it. And first set. She takes the set. Marilyn Noyan. And Marilyn Noyan's 
wins it in an athletic decider, that opening set, despite some excellent stuff from Amanda Harwood. You can see some of her friends and family there wondering how she didn't win that set, but it's because Noyan's managed to get the double in that all-important deciding leg. Noyan's leads Amanda Harwood by one set to nil. Well, Marjolein Noyens has taken the first set against Amanda the Panda Harwood. We've had all the panda puns out here, haven't we? It wasn't quite pandemonium because you didn't take the, the first set. How did you feel Noyens plays in that opening set? Pretty well. She came out of the blocks really buoyantly. And I think what you've got to do when you get that adrenaline rush is you've got to play it and embrace it. She did, but when things started to calm down in that first set, I think Amanda Harwood just started to get herself into the game. But... The pressure was applied in that fifth leg of that set, but it was a set that Noyens really did deserve in the end. And that 27 checkout at the end, we, we talk a lot in darts about, you know, these important 81, 76 checkouts, but sometimes you need something smaller, which is just as key. And she certainly delivered there. For Amanda Harwood, being here, she said, has been a lifelong ambition for her. Do you think you just don't realise how the nerves are going to affect you until you actually get up on that stage following the walk on. That's so true. You, you, you build this up through your entire life when you've played every single game of darts in your career and you think, all I want to do is have that experience of going up there. But until you grace the stage, you've got no idea how you're going to feel and how you're going to play it under that sort of game pressure. It's not a bad first set for Amanda, but now she really does have to get into set two Get herself a little bit of a lead, and if she can do that, then this game should go three sets. Do you think she, she can take it to the third set? I think she can. I think she's got the experience. I think she's got the winning experience in tournaments, and that's the kind of pressure when you come through it. That's what builds the confidence to give you the belief to go on that stage and do it. And Maria O'Brien awaits the winner of this one. What kind of a match would that be? Maria is a stalwart of the ladies' game. She's very hard to get through. She's very hard to beat and she's always here. It means that she's got consistency throughout the last five to 10 years, and whoever comes through this is gonna have a very tough match on their hands. When Mikuru Suzuki won her first title here, Maria O'Brien tested Suzuki the most. That tells you a lot. There's a lot of support here for Amanda, though. That, that crowd have really got to get behind her now. They do. You've got to play that support. We've had the likes of Ben Hazel having local support here, but you saw at the end of that first set just how quiet they were when Noyan's got that winning double 12. So stay loud, everybody, and try and get her across the line because it will help her. Let's see if she can do it as we head into that second set. Welcome back, and we are embroiled in a, a tight tussle between Amanda Harwood and Marilyn Noyens, who won the opening set in the last leg decider. Both players throwing some decent stuff on their respective lakeside debuts. And I think whoever lost that first set was going to be 
feeling a little hard done by it just happened to be Harwood. And quality from both girls there. I think, to be honest, I think this is probably going to go down to the last leg of the third set as well, to be honest. It just feels that sort of game. Very evenly matched, both playing well. 60. Just to put you in the picture, the winner of this takes on Maria O'Brien. That's in the same section of the draw, the same quarter as the match that was set up earlier today. Corin Hammond, number two seed against Rhiannon Sullivan. I think whoever comes out of that section has got a real good chance of making the final because the top half of the draw is really stacked with big names, Dieter Hedman, Lorraine Wynne Stanley, Makuru Suzuki, Aileen de Graff and Bo Greaves all in that top half of the draw. I mean, I, I used to look at the draw back in the day and think, oh, look at all them, but logically, there's only one of them can come through that top half, so they've got to sort themselves out. That's the secret, trying to sort your own head out and just look after yourself. Just win your little corner of the draw. 100. From what we've witnessed so far, both of this pair will, will fancy the chances against O'Brien, who has got darting pedigree, but 14. has got a bad game in her as well. As we all have, and uh, as I was saying early on, at least the winner from this game has had a tough game under her belt, and full of confidence. Sometimes I think I think the seeds think that it's a bit of a disadvantage coming in a bit cold, no matter how much you practice in the back room or back at the hotel or wherever you fancy going practicing. It's not the same as playing a game on the stage. And you get it. 43. Yeah, whether that's, whether it is true or not doesn't really matter. It's what you think as a player, isn't it? If you convince yourself it's a disadvantage, then you may hinder yourself. If you convince yourself it's an advantage, then you'll be more confident. You know, there's enough people in this game trying to trip you up without doing it to yourself. <laughs> Mind games, yeah. It's a big part of the game. Howard's come out okay, kind of following each other, both with a ton in the leg. Howard with a couple of straight 60s. That's a good rescue, really, on that shot. Every leg's kind of been competitive, and that's exactly why it went the distance in the opening set. And you could easily see this going 3 2, 3 2, 3 2. Almost, almost. Better the ball. And now Howard, having been in pole position in this leg, needs to take out the 106. Treble 18. Can't hunt it down. So Noyans here has a big opportunity to break in the opening leg of set two and put herself almost on the brink of progressing. Well, the first two were a bag of spanners, but <laughs> that last dart was superb. It was the nuts. Yeah, excellent rescue, wasn't it? And she didn't stop at all, did she? Is it kind of a feature often of Dutch players that they throw at a, a rapid, rhythmic pace, and you didn't let the misfires fluster her. Yeah, there was no standing back and thinking about it. She knew exactly what she'd done. Well, part of that is counting, isn't it? Ability to count at speed as well. Arithmetic, mental arithmetic. I mean, obviously the kids that actually play darts in school, using it as part of the curriculum, have done for a long time. No, One hundred and forty. Good response. 
does need to try and find a break back. Amanda Harwood 